I mean, hello. How you doing, everybody? I've got no idea why the intro changed to that Mind's Eye um, bloody space shuttle stuff. Not only is it not set up to do that, but I wasn't even near the keyboard or mouse. It just kind of did it. So maybe we'll have all sorts of interesting failures this evening. Hopefully that is the only one, because that was a bit strange. Both, Gravity Gunner. So I hope you're all as well as can be in these shitey, shitey, shite times. But fear not. There will be other times that might not be shite. <laughs> That's how that works, I'm sure. Actually, it kind of is. Anyway. Um, yeah. About it, really. No quiz tonight, I'm afraid, folks. Didn't have time to write one this last week. Quizzes will return in the new year. Unless next Wednesday is before the new year, in which case they will... Uh, no, they will return before the new year. <laughs> uh, Dave, destroy... Gibalaxigagor with your orbital laser cannon, please. Thank you. Um, yeah. What if there is no year? Good thinking, Lobster Gate. If there is no year, we will still have quizzes. Quizzes cannot be stopped. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah. Quiz of the year, all the bar. Oh my god, grandparent. Imagine that. I do want to do another all bastards quiz at some point. That was good. But there we are. The bot is still balked. Bloody hell, I keep turning it on and off. And that's all I can do with that, really. <clears throat> hmm. I'll hopefully have it fixed for the next one. There's not much else I can do with it, really. Thank you, Dave. Good work. So, as a special gift to Mod Dave, and as it's Christmas, we'll be playing his song in full tonight by his own special request. I'm not joking either. He actually texted me and said, can you play my song in full tonight? So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Certainly. Certainly, certainly, certainly. Um... We can't do it yet, though. Let's go away for the Dancing Monster. Bloody hell. Right, let's get on to the um, Almighty Admin. Thank you very much, too. Ooh, there's a lot of the stuff here. Bellboy321! With the 48th month sub-anniversary! Four full human years! Thank you very much, indeed. My God. Estax, I don't know. I'd love to go back to doing one a week, but... Um, I don't usually have time with all the other guff going on that actually pays bills. <laughs> I should just stop the... Actually, the thing that makes the least money is probably Twitch. I should just uh, kill this um, stream entirely. In fact, let's do that now. Bye, everyone. Changed my mind. Oh, God. Oh, did you see that? There was like a charity QR code thing came up for a second. Bloody hell. We really, we really are having all the joys tonight. Bloody hell. SJ Parters, that would have been impossible because it was a surprise for me, that calendar, until I arrived. Unless he'd bought me clothes like that beforehand. It could have happened, my God. Oh, your granddad. Morning to you too. I mean, it's late evening here, but I appreciate the sentiment. Um, Okie doke. Twitch hired Elon to be their new CEO. Good God, don't joke about it, retired egg. <laughs> oh, the stack of CDs, my God, rubber cat. Why was there so much boys? <sighs> Let's not get into the stack of Advent CDs. It is a dark, dark pit. Um, right. Let us go back. Bloody hell, I can't find the start of the um, chat stuff. Here we go. Thank you very much too. <coughs> No thanks whatsoever. Go to Silent Phils, who summoned the Dancing Monster. <laughs> Thank you to Ghosty Fish, 17 months. Thank you very much. Warrior Mella, 28 months. Thank you very much indeed. McCobster, 38 months. Conbriosi, 22 months. Steelwolf, 171, 28 months. Rogatari, 37 months. Grand Parrot, 30 months. Canuck Jim, 18 months. It's beginning to look a lot like psychopathy. Orternal, 13 months. Wednesday, but actually Sunday. Definitely Wednesday. Hang on, we'll check. Yes. DJ68K, 31 months. Thank you. Lamrut for the 25 months. Poundland PC giving out gift sub. Thank you very much. Ad Keys, 48 months. Ad Keys, my God. That's like fourth bloody years. Thank you very much, fella. Smiggy, cheering the bits there. Thank you. Ron McBomb MC giving out five community subs. Thank you. Dapuli, 11 months. Thank you very much. Din Not, 35 months. Michael, Mike Health. Michael F, let's go for 01, six months, thank you very much. Hodvig, two months. 
Play Games Bad, 27 months. Cali Gem, 32 months. The Figurehead, 615, 52 months. Crikey. Mid Boss, 11 months. Blimey, it's all today. I Prawny, 29 months. Jiggle Nomicon, 10 months. Snakey Bee, 42 months. Activate, 3 months. Smiggy, 11 months. Coda, 227, 44 months. Hellboy, 321, 48 months. We mentioned that one, but we're mentioning it again. Spooky Watson. Thank you for your sub there. Welcome. Commissar Ludfang, 200 bits. <clears throat> and I could make a fancy wig out of that golden string thing. I think it's for keeping... Ooh. <laughs> it certainly was powerful. I sold my copy of Sonic R this week on the Saturn. Sold all my Saturn games this week. I only have a couple remaining. Finally, they are gone. I was hoping to keep them for retirement, but then disc rot became a thing, and that wasn't really feasible anymore. My Paradoxical Me, two months. King of the Rodeo, 87, three months. Jacob Nyon, 34 months. SJ Parters, cheering, 200 bits. Thank you. Mosness, five months. Vector John, 17 months. Crikey, and equally O'Reilly, absolutely. Parzafel, 500 bits, thank you there, which we just mentioned. I'm mentioning it again. Sonic R, Rob, Bob MC, 43 months, and we've got to the end without the... I gave it a chance. <laughs> But it didn't come. Oh, dancing monster. You only ever come when you want to. Come on, I've gave you another chance there. Ah, oh, bloody thing. Never mind. Am I doing a passive stream, this crisp mouse? I certainly am, beardy viking. Um, it'll probably go horribly wrong because I won't be around to keep an eye on it. But there we are. And Dave DJ Johnson gifting the subs there to Shattered Saint. Oh... Ballet Dude says, are you going to go to 1UP Dan next year and hire 24 of those big storage containers that you get on ships? The idea is one of those is just a small plastic Poundland figure in the centre makes me laugh. Oh my god, that would be amazing. I uh, also hope Ashton Senior is okay. The golden string thing is a curtain to keep insects out in summer. Uh, sadly, Ashton Senior is not okay. Um, well, he's, he's not too bad, but uh, to cut a very long story short, or really to cut a short story even shorter, um, I was visiting him last week. Do you remember we did that stream? last Thursday, uh, about uh, sort of chat about films and then um, watched Santa with Muscles with Booth, which was bloody hilarious. Um, yeah, about 90 minutes before we went live, I was visiting him in the hospital and the doctor just came round, pulled the curtains and said, uh, sorry, I've got to tell you, you've got terminal cancer. We're like, oh, great. That came a bit out of left field. Turns out he's got like a massive tumour in his kidney and it's spread to the uh, lymph glands and uh, he's too weak to actually have any treatment so uh, uh, it's all a bit of a poo but he didn't really mind that much as odd as it sounds I think he kind of felt like he was to put it politely on the way out anyway and this just sort of gave a name to it do you know what I mean um, but it's not nice obviously by any stretch of the imagination but um, yes he is now under palliative care and literally went into the sort of hospice place today Went and visited him uh, just for the stream. And I tell you what, it's a lot nicer than the bloody hospital. It really is. Um, and he's been in that hospital for quite some time now. So he was very pleased. He was all excited. He said, I pressed this button for the nurse to come. And the nurse came. I'm like, that's good. He went, yes, she was here in like a minute and apologised for being a long time. I'm like... Oh, okay. He said, in the hospital, it takes about five hours. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. See, the thing about hospitals is, I've not quite got the funding. But, um, yes. Anyway, he's much preferring it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Pr uh, for, um, sort of, if anybody asks how long he has, we don't know. It's one of those things, I think, where it kind of won't give him any jip until it blocks his kidneys. Then, uh, very quickly, it will cause problems. But there we are. Uh it's all a bit random. The doctors didn't even like to hazard a guess, which I think is sensible. Uh, well, anyway, that was my birthday and Christmas. <laughs> Still, I'm having a better one than he is, so it's not too bad. Um, but the most importantly, I found some really weird items going through uh, the stuff in his house, which I can do a video on for Patreon. So that is something. Mm. I certainly am, Dave. I certainly am. Sorry, I've... Um, completely missed uh, chat there. What was all going on as I was uh, spewing everything? Oh, bless you. You're all very kind, but uh, yeah. It's it's not quite as bad a situation as it sounds. It's still not great, obviously, but um, yeah. It could have been a lot worse, put it that way. And speaking of a lot worse, 
See, I keep giving the dancing monster chances. It's bloody late. It should have been in by now. My God. <clears throat> Dave says, could we have a stream for cancer research in the future? Hang on a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, dear. Can we have a stream for cancer research? We could do, Dave. We absolutely could do. Yeah. SolarPod says, good news. My Amazon front page now is a permanent continue watching Santa with muscles box on it. <laughs> but will you continue? Will you continue? My God. <laughs> oh, Alpine Escape. Um, subbing there for five months. Bless you. What are the key differences between PS 2008 for PS2 and PS 2008 for Wii then? Probably something to do with half assed motion controls. Slow motion atomic bomb. Cheering 200 bits. Thank you. That's very good of you. Right. Grand Paris says, Dancing monsters must be using the trains, judging by how every train I caught today was late. Oh, God, don't. I worked out that the last nine buses I got, three of them broke down. That's not an exaggeration. Three out of the last nine buses I got broke down. Oh, God. Watch all of Hulk Hogan's movies. I don't think, Indiana Jason, I... Finally, I was getting a bit worried actually <clears throat> because the Christmas one I have to force through because usually it picks like um, out of a random sort of pool of them, but not one it's had recently. But yeah, for Christmas or special occasions, you have to kind of do something else to get it to um, do a specific one. I thought that might have messed it up then, but it all worked. Hooray! Kind of. I don't know. The I tell you, the code that summons the dancing monster is years beyond its last legs <laughs> and the person who wrote it is long gone so. uh one day we'll get it working better mm. or it'll just break entirely and i'll have to manually do it like i do on a sunday i don't know locutors of sunnydale 10 months thank you very much indeed craven says the watch party just crashed the app every time for me but unfortunately i've seen santa with nostrils before i hadn't craven it was i was expecting something along the levels of competency of Suburban Commando, but no. No, we did not get something of um, Suburban Commando competency by any bloody stretch of the imagination. Rubber Cat says, the last time I had to cancel a ticket, they charged me £10 for cancelling a digital ticket. Doesn't surprise me. I'm quite surprised it didn't just come round and beat you to death with a sock full of doorknobs, frankly, for having the audacity to travel on the train. But there we are. Hmm. Yeah, Enigma. It occurred to me the other day, we've never had that video clash again. And I have stupidly played videos when it could have interrupted, but it's never actually happened again. Hmm. Moshandin says, Jesus, Cliff Richard is on TV. He looks like Tutankhamun. Cliff Richard is like almost exactly the same age as my dad, so he must be in his early 80s. Obviously. He'd be 81, I imagine. Good God. Um... Craden says, my wife decrees that as soon as the Christmas channel starts in September, it's non-stop Christmas. So I've seen, oh my God. How do you deal with it, Craden? You, you must have to go out a lot and just stare into the abyss. Presuming you have an abyss in your garden. If not, you can have one fitted from Abyss Co. Uh, Curl the Dragon 32 says, the film's even cheaper looking than I expect. Yeah, bloody hell. Oh my God. Dave says, this shows how broken trains are. A train I paid £3 for was cancelled. In return, I received a free open return to anywhere on the Northern Network for free. It's worth over 100 quid. What? <clears throat> how does this bloody work? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Ashley Nido says, I was going to say that Santa with Muscles isn't the worst Hulk Hogan movie. And I just realised that it probably is. Canic Jim says, Cliff Richard is 82 and looks like someone opened the Ark of the Covenant. We say, oh, he's a bit older than my dad thinks. My dad wouldn't, won't be 82 until March. So, hmm. He's been telling me they're about the same age for years. That's probably six months, isn't it? God damn it all to hell. Worse than Mr. Nanny. Oh, No Holds Barred. <sighs> See, I know that film exists, Snakey B, but I don't think I've ever spoken to anyone who's seen it. So, um, hmm, there we are. 
<laughs> Jennifer Kimson says, I'm pretty sure Hogan's sex tape is worth. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you that. Yeah. McKinsey's Island. Oh, my God. That was one, wasn't it? Slow motion atomic bomb. Bloody hell. Uh, just chatting tonight. Katie, we have no quiz this evening. I did not have quiz quizzing time to um, finagle a quiz from the abyss. Mega Square says Channel 5 have, have been on the Hallmark Christmas movies <laughs> since about mid-October and my stepmom refuses to stop watching the appalling things. Possibly they contain something chemically addictive like Pringles. <laughs> or Turkish Delight. I find that the most addictive. Um... What is the one with the speedboat? Ooh, good question. Wasn't that Thunder in Paradise? Wasn't that a TV show? M. Kingston says, My dad used to add one year to his age consistently for no reason. <laughs> oh, I love stuff like that. Somebody, I can't remember who I was speaking to, but they'd found their um, birth certificate that they'd never needed because they were applying for something to discover that their mum had been got it totally wrong and they were like a year younger than they thought they were the whole time. Or I should say almost a year. It wasn't like they were in the young, wrong, le wrong year at school or something. But it's just like, how does that happen? How does that happen? <clears throat> Have I got any more IFD published pseudo anime to release? Oh, our good friend Ed Glazer has all of it. He may have discovered some more knowing it. <laughs> so, my God. Oh, Thunder in Paradise was done as a TV movie too. Ah, interesting film, Canary. Thank you. I know there was that awful FMV game. That's the only one I can think of. Uh, Rutia says is the stream of the children playing Indian based farm safety video oh god yeah I, I have them all saved somewhere Rutia but sadly they're not online because they get nukes for copyright the one you're thinking of though is called Apaches and is very easily available on YouTube and stuff very easily <clears throat> gosh you're going to have to excuse me I can't quite manage to clear my bloody throat this evening I don't know what it is probably before coming on the stream, I did eat some Sour Patch Kids watermelon flavour, so I'm going to blame them. Uh, Dave says he runs a petrol station. I'm starting to realise how many things have paraffin in. I have something I use for psoriasis, contains it as well. Yeah, paraffin is in an awful lot of... Bloody hell, excuse me. God, drive me mad, that. Um, yes, yeah, used in an awful lot of um, sort of skincare products. Yeah. Stuart Kenny says, here's an amusing story. Hulk Hogan went on Jonathan Ross in 1993 to promote Mr. Nanny, and Hogan went, here comes Mr. Nanny, and he's going to kick some fanny. <laughs> there was an awkward silence, and Ross had to break it to Hogan that fanny has a different meaning in the UK. Oh, oh, man. Stuart, do we have that clip? Is that on YouTube? We need to be using that. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> Film Canary says, Hogan claims that he was almost the lead and Aronofsky's the wrestler. Something Aronofsky himself denies. Yeah, you'd think Aronofsky would know, wouldn't you? My God. Ad Key says, a friend of mine didn't know how old he was for ages because he didn't have his birth certificate and the year of his driving licence and passport were a year different. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Jackal Blade says, Hulk Hogan lies pretty much whenever his lips move. Hmm. He certainly doesn't act if we're looking at Santa with muscles, but let's not get into that. Oh, my God. Spanking Squire says on The Simpsons, I remember Skinner's mother saying, my fanny is sort of, mm, yeah, mm, mm. Ah, my God. Pasta mania. That's all we need. It'll solve all our problems health-wise and create loads of others, probably. <laughs> Hogan also said he was asked to join Metallica by Lars Ulrich. Anything else? Is he going to claim he invented the concept of the bag? Bloody hell. Deary me. Tiny Penguin says, My mum had an auntie fanny growing up. Apparently it was never mentioned. Some names do not age well. The worst I've ever seen is LOL. Um, I don't know what name it's short for. Lolita, maybe? I don't know. But um, there was a certain time where there were like Auntie LOL, that kind of thing. But it sticks in my head. Because I've seen in the in one of the crematoriums near Norwich um, quite a long inscription for somebody and said, oh, beloved so-and-so, um, and uh, rest in peace, and also her sister, Lol. But the problem is, now Lol, of course, looks like Laugh Out Loud, so it looks like they're taking the piss on somebody's epitaph. And it reads really weirdly. I nearly took a picture and put it on Twitter years ago, and I thought, mm, mm, no, that's <laughs> a bit bad taste, isn't it? But there we are. 
Lamrit says Adolf isn't popular thanks to someone. Yeah, bloody Clarkson. Uh, Bernie one says Hulk Hogan attempts to make a set of meat warming shoes. There's a pattern for meat warming shoes. What? Oh, Luna Looney had a neighbour called Lol, short for Lawrence. Oh, I've only ever heard it in uh, for women before. That's interesting. Here lies Lamau. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I've probably mentioned this before, but there's one um, in the crematorium near my mother's, um, uh, what do you call it, a crematorium, grave type thing, and it just says, in memory of my father. And that's it. No name, nothing. You often think, what the hell happened there? I don't know. It's, I mean, maybe it's just somebody who's very bad with epitaphs, but mm, I don't know. It, it feels like there's a reason it isn't named. You know, what did uh, father do there? I mm, don't know. Karen X says, you never saw the meat warming shoes. They're fantastic. So do you, are they just shoes that you put meat in? Do you have to walk on the meat? That seems very strange. Ugh. Good God, Hogan's lies are, are quite, quite extensive. Bloody hell. Oh, yes, Macobster, the mighty pussy energy drinks. My God. Remember seeing those in Macron? I've got to buy these for the YouTubes. I think we had to buy a whole crate of them. Yeah, we did actually, if I remember. My God, those were the days. <clears throat> Ballet Dude says, with the lol thing, a friend of my mum's friend had passed away and she sent her a text saying, sorry they have gone lol. She thought it meant lots of love. Oh! Blimey. Blimey. Yeah, maybe Snakey B, but I don't know. There's something about the way it's written that makes me think they wanted they had to have something, but like just no I don't know. It's I think it's because it's completely at odds with pretty much everything else in there, and there are thousands of them in this place, so dunno, maybe it is a nothing. Duncan 80, 30 months, thank you very much indeed. I read somewhere of a Welsh lady, says Crucible One, called Mafanwi, who started working in the USA and another Brit in the company had to advise him it wasn't pronounced my family. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Mentus. The next Uncle Mentus Royal Rumble. If you did miss Mensky's Royal Rumble recently on his Twitch channel, it was a thing of beauty. Uh, I think Edmund Blackadder won the Royal Rumble in the end, but... Uh, it had so many different 80s TV characters in it. It was quite tremendous. Um, Roy Walker from Catchphrase was in there. Uh, God, I can't, I can't think of any bloody specific ones. There was somebody, Mr. Blobby and Edmonds turned up. That Really, that's all you need for actual top flight Royal Rumble. But there was far more. It was an astonishment. My God. Uh, are booby drinks still around? Good question, still alive. I haven't thought of those since I did the bloody video. Not that I've seen, but then again, they're probably not something I would notice around normally. Are they? Right, anyway. We promised Dave, we promised him, that we would play his beautiful, wonderful, full song. So here we bloody go. Oh, it's not playing. Oh, God! The videos have screwed up this evening. Right. Anything I play later, I'm going to do through VLC. Right. This should fix it, maybe? Yes. Why is it so small? Yes. Ich habe zehn Finger, zwei Hände. 
I've met up with David, Sarah, and Jessica to find out just how wired they are. David's got Kingston Interactive TV, and it's changed the way he watches the box. I use Kit mostly for telly, but I can also use it for video on demand. It's where you can order any films instantly. And all it takes is one click of a button instead of wasting time going to the shop and back again. My God, I'd forgotten that was edited on the end of that. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> but you were predicting Netflix. You were there first, pressing one button and instantly delivered a film at shocking cost. Shocking cost. Right. English is my Lieblings fan. Oh, God, DC Flake, that's my favourite one. I don't think I've got it, unfortunately, on the computer, except edited into an intro. Hang on, I'm going to search all hard drives. Dun, 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 dun. No, there's nothing in there. That's a shame. Oh, well. It's on YouTube, and it is on UTM. This is true, but it must be, because um, if it wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to get it in the first place. This used to do the rounds on the old news groups and stuff. Mentus will absolutely... Um, well, I think it was him who told me about it. God. All Rolly and Rita songs. Humanity cannot stand it. Apparently Rita's voice actor is on TikTok. Okay. Right, bear with. I've got to find the start of it. Oh yeah, this is it. Obviously. Oh, I think we've got to. Oh no, we've got to show the whole thing. Okay. Well, <clears throat> as often shared as couldn't stop. Well, yeah, that's in the bloody um title here, Mentus. Actually, it just came through. Yeah. Hello, Aus Sid Cup. <laughs> Oh, the ideal copy. Kids can be cruel, shall we just say. My God. Lady Deadness, you are right on time. My God. Um, okay, let's see if we can get this uh, to work full screen, because that will be the easiest way for me to do it. Right, so in theory, if I was to now push this button... Oh, here we go, folks. Here we go.
Oh, I feel like that should end on some sort of absolutely massive boom or something. Oh, I'll have to edit it together at some point. Why not? <laughs> There's a 10-hour version of this on YouTube, right? That's the Christmas Day thing sorted. <laughs> Bloody hell. <clears throat> Neil says that was far more awesome than it had any right to be. I know, Neil. It's weirdly compulsive. It really is. I mean, the Sven Finger is funny, but like... And there is something to it, but that is a really weird banger. End it with a reverb file. Good plan, Red Comet. <laughs> We've got to keep it classy. Yeah. Gravity Gunner says, I have no idea whether Singlet Maths being their favourite subject. Um, I imagine that's why they've been trapped in the techno dimension, so they don't leak out and hurt other people. Uh, it should end that weird statue zapping Jimmy with a lightning. Yes, Dave. <laughs> it just ends with a statue of St. Christopher coming up and zapping them both. Oh, my God. Um... Yep, do you know, Lady Deadness technically not even German rave music, but uh, English techno music made to teach children German, I think is technically the answer. I think it's a British produced programme, that. I can't remember. Nina Hagen's origin story. <laughs> oh my God. And the Amanda Gallus as well, yeah. Right. Nico Diva says, I came across a version on TikTok where it's mashed with Dance Rush arcade footage. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Oh, Ruby Red, I forgot about Limbo of the Lost. I still haven't checked to see if that's working properly yet. Oh, God. Yeah, Hello, Aus Berlin was a BBC thing. Ah, I did not know it was BBC, but I knew it was it was local, obviously. Um, we used to we used to curate weird videos, now just full of top pop songs. That's routine, yeah. Mm, just them and Maywood, really. And that uh, version of Part-Time Lover that Derek Griffiths does. Oh, my God. Arctura says, I recognise a synth sample from State of the Art, the Amiga demo. If it's the one I'm thinking of, when you get to the lower end of 90s techno music, you hear that quite a lot. Quite a lot. Um, right. So, we should probably do something! No, no, that's exciting. Um... Guy in a Hello Us, but in has and uses an Amiga, says Cube School. Ooh, I didn't realise that. It would have been that time, wouldn't it? But and I was a little bit too old for Hello Us, but in also my school didn't teach German. So <laughs> it's not really going to happen, is it? My God. Not before we hear Daxtron songs, says Dave. Oh, God. Oh, Daxtron. But link there. What is this? Oh, my God. It harbour California fingers. Oh, yeah. It's playing. There's no visuals, folks. You're not missing out on anything. Getting compulsive. Incidentally, folks, the director of the Tyrant King died this week. Mike Hodges. And the beat on this really reminds me of Optimate stuff. Oh yes. Right, we're going to skip ahead a bit. It's quite a long one. Let's see how it ends. Oh, Daxtron, my friend, you have an ear for it. That was a thing. Blimey. 
very, very compulsive. That would have filled the bloody floors in the 90s. That absolutely would have done. Um, nobody would have known it was about fingers, probably. Yes, people saying, yeah, Mike Hodges, director of The Tyrant King. That was his first major job, I think. Uh, died this week. You will probably know him more from directing Flash Gordon, though, and Get Carter. Um, both of which are kind of brilliant in their own ways. Um, Get Carter being a fantastic film and Flash Gordon being a whole heap of fun. Especially when... Uh, oh, God, I can't remember his name. The one that um, Jason King plays. Oh, I can't remember the Jason King actor's name. Good, good. Peter Wingard. What's his character's name? Something like Carax or Krulus or something like that. Clytus! That's it. Thank you, Mr. Mooncat. Remember his eye sort of melting out. Says, I need to watch Flash Gordon again. In many other ways, I think everybody needs to see Flash Gordon again. Mm. Flash Gordon. Simmons Dude says, I bought the Flash Gordon Blu-ray for £7 on Amazon today as I took it aside. Ooh. Ooh. That's good. Ooh, I don't think I have it on Blu-ray. Ooh, rather than make a note of that. Don't know if I've ever told you this, but um, after we um, we screened Game Child the first time, Mr. Weeble, John T, came up and said to me, um, we were chasing, oh, do you like it then? He's like, oh, very silly film. Very silly film. Reminded me of Flash Gordon. I thought, oh, what a bizarre thing. That is the type of thing Jaunty says. I then found out about five years later that Flash Gordon's like his favourite film ever. So he was actually giving a massive compliment. <laughs> ah, that's what it's like dealing with Jaunty. He's kind of brilliant. My God, he likes badgers. Um, and he is a very handsome man, Smiggy. Absolutely. Uh, Ashley Nido says, Flash Gordon is one of the movies where Deep Roy got to appear on screen. I don't think I knew who Deep Roy was last time. I saw it. No, I wouldn't have done. You see a lot of him in... Well, he plays all the Oompa Loompas in that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film, doesn't he? Flash Gordon. It's just occurred to me my girlfriend probably hasn't seen Flash Gordon. Oh, I watch that in the new... That might be our first film of uh, 2023. I always try and do something interesting at the start. We've done Roadhouse, Deathstalker 2. Um, that could totally be a thing. Minimalis says, I have it on 4K, Blu-ray, DVD, VHS, soundtrack and CD and framed vinyl. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it. I saw five minutes and didn't like it. No. <laughs> oh. See, that's a, that is a film that the 4K is tempting. There's not many films I say that about, but... Mm. Mm. Rhea says, do we have a name for Dave's sister in the videos we've watched today? Uh, Dave Etta. No, I've got no idea. No idea. Yeah, Deep Roy is like the little spiky bloke who hangs around with Simon Pegg, isn't he, in the Star Trek movies? Not in real life. Oh, yeah, Men of Malice. Do you not have it on VCD? It probably had an official release on VCD. You probably have to go to Malaysia and look through second-hand shops to find it. But... Uh, mm. James Clare, 31 months. Thank you very much indeed. Posfi Joe Stephen. This is a good point. We should actually get on to the um, bloody uh, toys at some point, shouldn't we? Uh, oh, Cakes Katie. You go oh, Flash Gordon is super fun. Um, oh, uh, Bird's Eye. I shall I just spotted your message. I shall uh, get back to you after the stream, my friend. Right. Do you have any Rankin Bass specials? Uh, technically, all of them somewhere still alive. Um, I'm not going to be showing any on Christmas Day. You ain't going to believe what I'm showing on Christmas Day. I, I think it may actually be a crime, but we shall see. <laughs> You're going to have a day of it. We'll put it that way. My God. Do you know, I finally got around to watching the 1970 Scrooge, the only version of A Christmas Carol I hadn't seen. Well, apart from that new one on Netflix, which we got about five minutes into and wanted to fucking die. Um, it was pretty good, actually. Uh, had some sort of... I'm not going to get technical on it, but the songs were generally quite good. And Alma Finney was excellent in it, so there we are. Anyway, enough Christmas Carol talk. It is time for... Some bloody Argos catalogue pages. Oh, God, I've lost... I spent ages finding exactly the right place to start, and now I bloody lost it. Like a great big tit. Oh no, I found the televisions. It's always just after the television, the toys. I remember this actual, this specific catalogue so strongly. It was one of those ones I just sit there and look through for bloody hours. Um, it's also got quite a lot of Rambo toys in, if I remember. Right. 
And let's start off with some calculators. Mmm, sexy calculators. And if I press this button, you should be able to see it. Damn it, I think I'm streaming in 720p. You really want 1080 for this. Never mind, too late to change now. And, blop, there we are. Mm. Texas Instruments. Everyone's over. I don't know where this came from, but it's a very big border on this scan. Creighton says, one of our favourite rev Amazon reviews was for the Flash Gordon soundtrack, which they'd obviously significantly misheard. It says, love the film, love Queen, love this two-disc album. Send out Warwick agents to bring back his body. <laughs> Warwick agents. When I grow up, I want to be a Warwick agent. Oh. Jeff Balder says, my favourite Christmas film is unironically the ALF holiday special. Sort of rips it's a wonderful life. Nothing wrong with ripping out It's a Wonderful Life. Look how many things rip off Christmas Carol. My God. This page is a mess, says Moshandin. No, oh God, you're not joking. Let's throw some calculators and grids on the floor. Oh, fuck. I remember seeing one of those. Broke after like two minutes because the buttons kept getting squished in. Uh, which calculator did you guys all have? Uh, I had, I think, that one. The so Yeah, it was definitely a solar-powered one. And it was a very basic Casio, so I think it's going to be that. Could technically be that one. Which one's cheaper? It will be that. That was five quid. That was five pounds forty-five. I hope it would have been that one. <laughs> they look bloody identical, actually. A credit card calculator, Sabrina and I've been there. One of these little flat credit card things. Yeah, it's just basically you could put it in your wallet, was the idea. But, as the teachers at school always said, you're not going to walk around with a calculator in your pocket in the future, are you? I mean, I suppose they're right on a technical level, but let's not get into that. Oh my god, no, that is the calculator. I had this set. Holy shit. With the awful pen that had um, a weird recess in the top of it. Oh my god. Bloody hell. Those teachers knew shit all, says <laughs> Sinkal 50 Gal 87. Yeah, um, I mean, they knew it at past exams at the time. That's quite important, I suppose, at the time. Uh... Blop. Ah, uh, speak and spell. These IQ builders, things that nobody in the entire world has ever seen, including the people who designed and made them. Maths Marvel, that's new. This is like a flat calculator. Little Professor, classic. And Dog Strangling Robot. Uh, very unpopular with all humans. Hmm. I thought you meant My Little Pony say, I wish, Sabrina. <laughs> oh, Mentors had a Commodore LED calculator. They're very collectible now for... Commodore reasons. Yeah. BC Birdseye has a gizmo Furby. You mean the the only Furby that makes sense? My God. Girl of the Dragon 32 had an IQ build, but not any of these ones. Mm. I swear I've got a little professor around somewhere that I got at a car boot sale like 20, 25 years ago for like um, no money whatsoever. Oculus Orbis, I certainly can. Whoop. This mighty thing. My god, these are very low quality scans. Well, I might have searched out another one if I'd realised. Never mind. Dark Squall! Thank you very much for your sub there. Happy belated birthday, Stuart. Thank you. I hope you had a good one. Here's my contribution to the belated birthday chair. That's very kind of you. Oh my god! Ten subs to smash that Kimimono von Cobalt Commando, Jazut, Cinnamon Robin, Fugutastic, Jaws 65, GW23, DH Fish, and Made in Glasgow 007. Ugh. <sighs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Sabrina says I come from an age when the flashiest classroom accessory was gel pens. Oh, yeah. Well, you're nothing like a good old gel pen. Oh, my God. It's a one-year sub-anniversary for Von Cobalt Commando. Look at that. What are the chances of that happening, eh? Do you know, something I would love to get and do a video on, I took me... God, I looked the name of it up and it took me like half an hour to find it years ago and now I'll never find it again. Um, actually, I've just remembered the name of it. It was a weird thing. I, I can only describe it as like a sort of big giant calculator type thing with lots of lights and a chicken, like a chicken that went and moved around behind this screen thing, like an actual model chicken. And it was called I Took a Lickin' From a Chicken. I am not making this up. And it was like a weird educational thing 
to do with numbers now. I'm going to be able to sort of beat it on all the high levels. But what a strange gift. But mostly, what a strange bloody name. I took a chicken. I took a licking from a chicken. That was it. It does sound like I'm making up a name, but honestly, this is a thing. You can Google it. Um, we might Google it afterwards, actually. Um, but they seem to be far more popular in America than uh, Britain. I think it just turned up in the shop at the end of our road, if I remember. But... In the US, there is a game where you play a chicken in tic-tac-toe. That is it, pity smile. Tic-tac-toe was one of the options. Yes. Yeah. DJ Googled it. It is the yes. It is. Oh, my God. Cakes Katie it is really weird. You mentioned Mr. Game Show. Sister bought one of charity shop. It's a bit creepy. Tell you why. I was thinking about Mr. Game Show today because I was... Um, Looking, I thought I hadn't been to the um, big toy fair at the NEC, or the, the toy market is a better way of putting it, the NEC, for, God, 20 years or something. I thought, oh, I might go. I'm not going to go because it's on the fucking 27th of December, unbelievably. But my main memory of going there years ago is seeing somebody selling a Mr. Game show, and I'd never seen it before. It's, it's the only thing I remember from it. I'm pretty sure Guru Larry has Mr. Game show, or has a Mr. Game show. I'm sure he does. Um, yeah. Anyway, enough of this. We need to. Oh, Major Morgan, got one of those in the office. That sort of plays tunes. I gave it to um, Alec, who you may remember from the old Star Wars videos, um, who was quite a muso, and he worked out how to play the Superman theme in it in like three seconds. I can't even get it to beep because I don't have any of the cards. <laughs> Uh, the problem, Dark Squall, is it's the old Britain thing of if you want to get trains, north and south is easy. East and west is horrifying. Like, it's like four and a half hours or something from Norwich to Birmingham on a train. If you were to drive it, it'd be three. Oh, God. Geek meets world! Merry Amazon to you two. <laughs> Ten months, thank you very much. Um, carbonated dipping jams is one of my friends had those Tomy things. I ended him until I played one. Yeah, I was never a massive fan of these, I've got to say. Um, good night, Poundline PC. Take care. The Pez. Thank you for your sub there. Three months. Yeah, this little dude, I forget what he was called. Um, Maximus. The computer companion for learning and fun. So he's kind of the Major Morgan stroke little professor, but for words? Is that the thing? Hmm. to Wowie says, does the direct Norwich to Liverpool strain still run? Ooh, yes it does. Liverpool Lime Street. Yes. Maybe I've been trying to break it in half for years, but no, it still uh, goes through. Good night, Roman the Astro Waste. Take care. Cedric the Protogen. Thank you very much for your sub there. Welcome. All right. Ryo Kazuki says, I was trying to figure out how to get from Glasgow to Norwich, potentially for one left left, and my conclusion was almost impossible. Oh, no, it's not too bad. Um, because the north-south thing isn't too bad. You can basically go Norwich, Peterborough, um, Edinburgh. You can also fly from Edinburgh to Norwich, and sometimes it is cheaper than the train. The last time I flew, it was less than a quarter of the price of the train. I, mean, I think that was mostly down to me catching it at a funny time, but all the same. Uh, Dave says, Hull to Norwich isn't actually that bad. Although I'll never return to Norwich. You fe I did feed Dave Pigeon, that is true. Just one we found in the street. I clapped and laughed as he vomited. <laughs> we had a great time. Most things come through Peterborough. Says, yeah, there's no reason to ever stop in Peterborough, but you always often have to change uh, trains there. <laughs> Bert's I says, I like it. you have absolutely no idea what Star Force look like Golden Tales. No, this is Star Force. Does the screen turn on? Dunno. <laughs> Buy it. <laughs> We're cheaper than other places. <laughs> uh. Ah, rodents, you are still with us. Good. This is what I like to hear. Um Crumpety Crumpington. Thank you for your sub there. Sixteen months. Introverts Go says, I found it's quicker to get to Spain by train from Norwich than it is to get to the north of England by bus. Yeah, I've, I've literally done that. <laughs> Inverts Go. Introverts Go. Um, to um, Barcelona. Yes, and it did work out quicker than going to, well, going to Edinburgh at the very least. Oh, dear. Here are these things. Each one of these is now worth over £47 billion. Mm, absolutely true. 
Oh, hang on. Humble Squire needs some info here. I was trying to find a toy I bought in the late 90s. It was a mechanical game where you pushed a little castle turret, making a knight with a lance move up and down to catch magnetic bats from a rotating arm. That sounds a bit like a pocketeer or something, a humble squire, but pocketeers were gone way before the late 90s. Mind you, that you could have bought it secondhand. I bought a load of pocketeers from a shop new in like 2008 or something. My God. It's, tragically, do you know what I discovered recently, Sabrina Ribena? Mega Bus no longer operates from Norwich. It was much cheaper and far nicer than the National Express, but nope. It's gone. Now National Express is the only option. The last time I went to get a National Express, I somehow missed it. By a minute or something. I still can't quite work out how that happens. I had plenty of time to get there. Ugh. Frustrating. Um, did I ever have a Mr. Machine? No, still alive. I'm not even sure what a Mr. Machine is. Is it the mystery machine that um, Scooby-Doo drives around in? Oh, you see, Aaron Field, you see, when I went on the Mega Bus, it was bloody great. But I think I only got it like twice or something. So maybe I was just lucky both times, you know. Ryo Gazuki says, I got the Mega Bus from London to Glasgow the day after the last Digi Live. Plan on getting the train next time. Ooh. National Express make, makes rest stops. Oh, I've never been on long enough to make rest stops. I don't rest stops, I don't think, Sabrina. I usually just get it from Weird Play. I think I got it in, like, Blackpool once years ago. I can't even remember. <laughs> Road to the Asteroid says, Yes, yeah, annoying to see all these people in France wanting the railways to be privatised, as if we didn't have an example next to us of how that would work. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, just just uh, have a peep over the um, channel there. And, yes, yeah. Birdseye says, brother had Donkey Kong Jr. Have audio recordings from Christmas 89 for proof. A mid-30s scouser explaining LCD monkeys to a four-year-old to backdrop of electronic beeps and sleigh. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like a time capsule if ever there was one. Bloody hell. Filmbrain says, the problem is the only real coach service is a National Express to London or Heathrow. So might as well get your... Oh, yeah. Here they go to Victoria, I think. Yeah, I'm sure it's Victoria, Filmbrain. Oh, Film Braid, I've, I've looked into that, um, oh God, I can't remember the name of the bloody film. Good God, I tweeted about it earlier. Um, uh, what was it bloody called? Body Contact, that's it. Yes, apparently that was the cancelled screening, unfortunately, or the cancelled showing on December 1987. And apparently it's just never been shown anywhere. I, I don't understand why. Everybody said it's really bloody good as well. Oh, oh well. Oh well. Bloody oh trans travel it's the worst thing, isn't it? It really is. Have you seen the toy George the computer robot? asks Bella. It doesn't ring a bell. Bit of a knockout of the design or knock off of the design of the robot. Vincent from Black Hole, yes, I know what you mean now. Yeah, it looks really like Vincent from the Black Hole. I know the one you bloody mean. Yeah. Oh, Filmbrain says you found a newspaper saying it was cancelled for mid-September. Interesting. So maybe the December one is the one that went ahead. Mm, my information on that could be hooky. Hmm, interesting. Future, thank you very much for your sub there. 23 months. They flew from Switzerland to Gatwick yesterday. Good God, 11 o'clock the day before my brother, who lives here, rang up to say he couldn't pick me up because he caught covid so now I too have experience with British Rail. Oh God. Um, I mean, I've got trains in Europe. I've got trains in Spain, trains in Germany, trains in Belgium, uh, and they were all kind of great. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Uh, the Spanish one was particularly nice, actually, incredibly cheap. Get annoyed now, right? Let's get back to the um, get back to the uh, Argos. Italy. I've never got a train in Italy, my boss. Oddly. Oh, Kong Man. Done many a video on Kong Man, by which I mean one, and it was technically the Sonic the Hedgehog version. But let's not worry about that. I had to cannibalise all the insides out of one of these to get it to work. Uh, Screwball Scramble. A classic. 
and now we have level two, of course. Atomic Pinball. They reissued Atomic Pinball a few years ago, and I bought one when it was reduced. I think it's sitting in the loft for video one day. Yeah, yeah, we did Barshan's Kong Man, didn't we? Did we do Barshan's Screwball Scramble? I can't remember. My God. Mega Square asks, does anyone remember an LCD game from the game Watch Era, but not a, a Nintendo one, which was basically a skateboarding-themed take on Frogger? I seem to recall it being surprisingly fun, but I can't for the life of me remember what his name was. Oh, interesting. Interesting. DC Flake says I gave Paul Gallon my mini Kongman. Yeah, um, the reason I got a mini Kongman for the video was because um, Gannon mentioned he had one, yes. I didn't even know it bloody existed until he mentioned. Humperdink Bandersnatch! Cow Postman. <laughs> 22 months. Thank you very much indeed. Maybe 2023 is the year we will find Cow Postman. I can't understand how it's so bloody obscure, considering I know of at least... Oh... I was going to say I know of at least three people who came up with it independently. Actually, technically, it's only two because um, me and my mate, I suppose, have the same copy. But hmm. The closest we've come is, well, we did get a disc um, with Cow Postman written on, but A, it didn't work, and B, what files I could find on it. I think it had been wiped to be used as a save game disc for the Atari ST game Captive. Not the Atari ST game, the Amiga game Captive. Oh, dear. The Pez says... Has anyone ever seen a film where a man dies in an MRI machine and he enters the power lines to avenge the people that killed him? I've seen it twice and I can never remember the name of it. Oh my god, um, that's not the the shocker or something. What is that bloody called? That's definitely a film I've found, um, heard of. Yeah. yeah, Returning I had Captive on the ST. That's why I immediately thought ST, but obviously it was the Amiga version because it was the Amiga disc. Oh, Mentus. I think that Stars demo is lost lost to the bloody ether i really do i've been looking at that for a decade um oh well that's life that's what it's called yeah shocker or live wire that or ghost in the machine oh ghost in the machine is apparently the one shocker is the electric chair you are correct made in glasgow double seven yes ghost in the machine is apparently the one oh it's mitch peleggi is it deacon oh i don't know much about shocker that's um it's familiar. Right, where are we? Super Cup football, is that the one that um, Ash Frith is always after? Is that Super Cup football or is it a slightly different one? Hmm. Yeah, Knock Your Block Off, um, based on the game show. We played that uh, on my channel. Gary Larry brought it around once we did that. Lost Valley of the Dinosaurs. I remember playing that as a kid. Escape from Atlantis, I've never seen. Cluedo, of course. Mm. Blob. Hungry, hungry hippos. Here, called the Hungry Hippos game. Oh, weird. Okay. I desperately wanted that as a child because it looked super fun. Then I played it years later and it's boring as fuck. All you do is jam down on a lever and eventually somebody wins. Great. Great. I can't remember the name of who presented Knock Your Block Off, DC Flake, but I can picture his face, weirdly. Locutus of Sunnydale says, I've often wondered why in the UK you call it Cluedo and in the US it's Clue. Is Cluedo a pun? Not that I'm aware of, Locutus of Sunnydale. Cluedo isn't really anything. I Generally, with things like this, it's a rights issue, so maybe there was already a board game called Clue in the UK? Or something similar, so we had to call it Cluedo? I, I genuinely don't know. Or maybe it's the other way round. But it seems more likely something would already be called Clue than Cluedo, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, if it's got no glow in the dark skull, DC Flake, then it's no ghost castle for me. Steve Blacknell apparently was the host of Knock Your Block of... Ah, oh, I don't recognise the name at all. Totally see his face, but I uh, don't remember the name. Nah, no, Clue and Cluedo are the same thing, Sabrina. Absolutely, yeah. Is the movie called Cluedo in the UK as well? Yes, Tom Times 2, but often not these days. Uh, it was at the time, though. Yeah. 
Oh, this I didn't know. Son of a Twitch says Dr. Black, who is the person who is murdered in Cluedo, is known as Mr. Body in the US version. Oh. Mm, bloody hell. Marty Parr says, I was watching the best and worst toys of 75 the other day and the precursor to Ghost Castle was rated among the worst games. <gasps> there's multiple versions of this, you know. There's some, um, I think there's some branded ones, if I remember. I can't remember the details now. Ah, oh, Trivial Pursuit, DJ68K. It was a revolution in dull board gaming for older people. <laughs> Jackal Blade, 45 months. Thank you very much. We had a game show for Cluedo in the UK too. That is true, D. Carino. Ran for quite a lot of series, didn't it? I've used that on um, passive streams in the past. Oh, right. So, Lacoutes of Sunnydale says, apparently, it's called Cluedo as Clue and Ludo, meaning I play in Latin. And it was first exported to the US. Oh, so they just didn't like the name in the US. Well, the company didn't, so yeah, there you are. BC Bird's Eye says, I want to see some plaster of Paris. Red red rubber moulds of pop culture cartoon shows characters to me with a sharp plastic red brush and paints. The brush has to be red, and it looks like it's in two segmented sections, but it isn't. It's just got a weird, like, knobble in the middle. Yep, that's the stuff. Hive says, in Canada and the US, the game is known as Clue. Yep, yep. It was retitled because the traditional British board game Ludo, on which the game is based, was less well known there than its American variant, Parcheesi. I didn't know Parcheesi was Ludo. Bloody hell, we're learning it all today. Good God. Right, got a lot of Cluedo explanations here. The Cobbster says the North American versions of Clue also replace the character Reverend Green with Mr. Green. Oh. Is it because they don't do anything to do with vicars and stuff in America? Or they call different things? Another classic of that is in the Chaos Engine. The um, vicar character is renamed the Scientist in the American versions. Hmm. Arcturus Deluxe says, Ludo. Now there's a shit board game. Yep. Then there was Frustration, which was similarly shit. Or at least had that cool dice popping thing. Oh, yeah. Dice-o-matic. Yeah. But Frustration is just Dice-o-matic Ludo, if I remember, wasn't it? Yeah. Slow Motion Atomic Bomb says, You did know Ludo was Parcheesi. You told us as much. You played an Assassin's years ago. I can't even bloody remember. If you'd asked me today, I'd have thought they were different things. <laughs> My board game knowledge has withered. Playing too much Conan. Um... New versions of Cluedo now have got rid of Mrs. White, the housekeeper, says Belly Dude. Oh, fair enough. They changed Mrs. White to Dr. Orchid. Ooh, Dr. Orchid is a strong name, though, isn't it? Sounds like a Bond villain. Right. Enough of this. We need to look at the My Little Pony Merry-Go-Round game. That looks bad. Downfall? That's vaguely fun, if I remember. I had a much uglier modern version of that. I got a car boot sale once. Bed bugs, lovely, and time factor, the weirdly over engineered game. Hmm. Bed bugs, the loudest game ever, says Spooky Wasn't. Oh, God, because it's all vibrating, they're leaping everywhere. Don't think I've ever played it. Right, anyway, we've got to shift along, we'll never get through this. <laughs> You know, whatever question he's asking, the answer is Barry McGuigan. Um, so you've got the Genus Edition, Genus 2 Edition, and I cannot make that up, Baby Boomer Edition. Bloody hell. That'd be for a much older demographic these days. Well, the same people, but an older demographic. Ooh. Right. Go for Broke. I've played that. It was quite fun. TV Times television quiz game I've not played. Game of Life I've played. That was right. A question of scruples I've never played. Game of Knowledge. Oh, my next girlfriend of mine had that. It was um, very easy questions, if I remember. But it is a trivia game for children. So there we are. And, of course, Risk. Oh, my God. Trivial Pursuit Tumblers. Oh, 
What? They seem down shots while you're playing it. Each glass represents one of the six question categories, and each has four questions and four answers. What? What the pissing hell is going on there? Oh, it means literally tumblers, as in glasses, just with Trivial Pursuit printing on. Right. Okay. Okay. Now what? Whoop. Build a better burger. I remember that being a thing, but mostly just in the Argos catalogue, to be fair. Chargoth X. 32 months. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Space Attack. The farcical sub-air hockey game. that always Just the concept of it made me laugh, which is why we have it in Game Child. Um, also, we were very lucky in that... Um, due to the way Action GT was bought by Tomy, which was then sold on to something else and blah, blah, blah... Um, we could use it without any rights issues because it'd gone so far down the chain even the lawyers couldn't find out who owned, owned it anymore. <laughs> God, didn't board games used to be cheaper, Izzy the Cabot? My God, by a massive margin. Good board game these days. A squillion pounds. Mind you, you're going to have more, funny, more fun with something like, I don't know, Dungeon Run than you probably are with Pop-Up Pirate, but there we are. They did a tiny version of Pop-Up Pirate in Poundland years ago, and it worked perfectly. Genuinely did. Mr. Pop, oh, classic. Crossbows and Catapults. My mate was into that. He had loads of it. I think I only played it with him once, but it was really good fun. Domino Rally. I remember buying a huge box full of like two or three Domino Rally sets merged or just thrown in together from um, like a friend's neighbour or something for like almost no money at all. I remember we put it on the back of a friend's bike to get it back to my place and it immediately fell off the bike and completely blocked the road. <laughs> ah, great days, great days. Cup final and test match. Yep, both from Peter Pan play things. We have four footballers on the pitch. We have some cricket men. Oh, so most atomic bomb says test match was good though. Mm, no, I, I defer to your knowledge there because I must have. I've never played it. There's always something disappointing about a football game. You've got almost no players though. Do you know what I mean? Oh, seven ones is pretty good though. Northeast recluse is pretty good. Right. Oh, some relatively early Lego. Well, eighty six, not that early. Fabuland with the weird animal characters. Always slightly creepy. I love it when Fabuland bits appear in bags of other stuff you buy. Uh. Games for sport people. They have to make everything about sport. Mostly their conversation skill, the Dragon 32. Um, I've never played Stratego, the Cooters of Sunnydale. People say good things, though. Um, basic train, very Duplo house. Some very basic construction sets. This always reminds me of being in... Um, I think it was in Jarrell's in Norwich. It was like a big department store, but it has a very big um, toy section and a very big Lego section of the toys. Um, they're like a sort of official reseller or something. And somebody was in there looking at like the Star Wars ones and, oh, they didn't do any of the generic sets anymore. You know, there's all this bloody licensed stuff. Oh, you can't just get bricks and, you know, like a power station anymore. It's a shame. And like, if he had moved his head about 12 degrees to the right, he would have seen more town and city sets than they'd ever produced in the past. Like, they had loads of them. An incredible variety of non-licensed sets. But nope, just going to look at the licensed ones and complain. God. It doesn't annoy me as much as the person in Hamley's who was complaining to one of the people who worked there that they no longer gendered the toys. There was no longer a boys' section and a girls' section. There totally was. Like, they literally, the floor was pink of the girls' section and the boys' stuff was upstairs and there were big signs leading to it. And the um, person working there pointed it out and he refused to look and said, it must be true because I read it in the newspaper. It's like, uh, uh. So anyway, I stabbed him. And then everybody applauded. That last bit didn't happen. Mm. Anyway, 
I prefer Langley's says AJ Point. Langley's pretty much gone now, AJ Point. Um, there's like the little one with the standard toys and board games in the Chantry Place Mall thing. And you've got the model shop still in the arcade, and that's it. It's much, much smaller. Uh... Odd that the Legoland petrol station is Shell rather than Lego Standard Octane. Yeah, I don't know what happened. For a period, Zach T. Duck, it was all Shell. It was all they had a license for it for a bit. Yes, and then everybody started clapping. That's it, Elfine's game. And I put it on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the gendering of toys drives me mad. Absolutely mad, Aaron Field. And um, the last time I went to Hamlet, it was a lot better. There was a lot of sort of crossover stuff. But I hate that whole thing of, ah, these toys look vaguely scientific or constructive. Boys section. Very annoying. Oh, you've got some sort of horse factory where they're building the horses out back. Yep. Uh, airplane factory. Uh, robot crocodile factory. Police factory. And a police factory warning system. Oh, amazing. Did I have that? I might have had that one, you know. I had something very similar. Hmm. I remember it being mostly bits of walls and a helicopter, so that would that would add up. Oh, it's brilliant, Pete W. There's so many board games. Spent a bloody fortune in there. One chop! 30 months. Thank you very much, fella. Oh, just getting into the really good castle Lego stuff. God, I had a brilliant Lego castle. It was massive. It was like the, the one Christmas present, but my God, it was good. That one's pretty good as well, though, it must be said. Lego trains. Modern cool train. Old steam train. We don't know what the fuck this is. All your favourite trains. Which toy shop was in Anglia Square? DJ, that was um, Kerrison's. Kerrison's had a big shop in Anglia Square for a while. Kerrison's still exists, but only up near the boundary these days. Yeah, which was their original shop anyway, so it kind of makes sense, I suppose. Uh, some Technic. Oh, and some Space. Technic never appealed. I don't really know why. It's probably more fun to do when you're a bit older, but... Spaceships and good ones as well. Um, Steve McNeil from Wi-Fi Wars has a complete set of the old space Lego. Like a, a total complete set. He used to occasionally build them on stream, actually. Yeah, it's a very Benny spaceship, isn't it? Um, that one's got light and sound. They were big on pointing out that they've got a bulb and a beeper for a while. Did he retire or not? I think he bought them recently. He's probably living in a ditch now. Um, all my spacemen have cracked helmets, says DC Flake. They all do, mate. They all do. I mean, hell, even Benny from the Lego film has a cracked helmet, doesn't he? Yeah. Hello, X Cody Yellow. How you doing? Oh, Arcturus Deluxe was in the Ice Planet and Space Police era. Yeah, a bit later on. I remember being so impressed by... I think it was like a standee in uh, I think Roy's of Roxham of all places, goodness why I remember that of like a um, just like a black Lego spaceman um, as in like a completely black sort of suit and holding one of those little aerials where the aerial was glowing in the dark green so it looked like a lightsaber oh, those were the days, my god Amiga Square, that sounds amazing anything with those glow in the dark ghosts which were brilliant Automatically gets all the points. Blacktron, I think it was something Blacktron related, Gamara. Now you've said that, that does ring a bell, yeah. Commissar Ludfang literally mentioning the Lego ghost there after Mega Square did, yeah. Yeah, it's so good that. Right. Robotics. Puts the future in your hands. Robotics. I remember that advert vaguely. Uh, I've got a big box of this. I think it's this box. No, it's this one. Recognise the thing on the front. But it's just full of random bits of other sets mashed into it. That has been sitting in the garage for a thousand years. Oh God, I hope I still have it, actually. Shit. I got that to like do in the early days of YouTube and somehow never got around to it. 
had that action figure all you can't make it out here but that is a an action figure right? you showed that in the old weird action figures from the 80s video years ago and constructs which looks a bit cheap but is probably quite good fun bolt and build because Meccano isn't a thing anymore hmm. good night chloe raccoon merry christmas and all that Daxtron says, fun Lego fact, the Octan brand was a Lego invention, yep, but there's unlicensed Octan petrol stations in Russia? Whoa! Oh, bloody hell. There's a robotics movie, Gamara? I didn't even know there was a bloody cartoon! Good God, is it Christmas? Is there a, is there a Christmas theme? Can we watch it on Christmas time? Bloody hell. Yeah, people, multiple people mentioning the robotics movie. Oh, God. I might have to start searching out these weird TV movies of... Um, well, most of them are a few cartoon episodes edited together. They're about, you know. Hmm, that could be a stream thing, couldn't it? Ah, the, so the robotics movie is several shorts compiled into a movie. Ah, there we are. Oh, there was a Swedish TV showing a body contact named Narcontact over here. Oh, nope, didn't Simmons, dude. We're still 50-50 on whether it was shown in Britain at all. I found out earlier it definitely wasn't, but Film Brain has found information which kind of uh, dispels that, so we're not sure. Oh, Chloe Raccoon, bless you. I'm sorry to hear that. Robotics blends with Zoids for me. It's something my rich cousin had loads of. Oh, I had a friend at school who had all the Zoids. Oh, not particularly because he was like rich or anything, but because he really fucking loved Zoids. So that's what he always wanted for birthday and Christmas for like multiple years. Yeah. Hello, Hannah. Who? Welcome. We're looking at Guff. We do that a lot. Um, right. Oh, fuck it. That's Mr. Frosty, everybody. It's already broken just from looking at it. <laughs> Absolute gump, Mr. Frosty. Everybody wanted it, and nobody, at least that I knew, ever had it. But we've discovered years later this absolute arse wash. Like, properly, properly bad. Ah, the mop tops from the Play-Doh mop top hair shop. I have a knockoff version of that that I got for a video, and I don't know where that's gone. The fake Play-Doh in it will have bloody dried up 400 years ago though my god my computer says zoids took over my junior school for a day then we went back to our tamagotchis and rubber string thing <laughs> i do love a very short-lived fad i'm trying to think of our shortest lived fad when i was at school possibly trim balls hmm Ah, the smell of Play-Doh. God, yes, rodent of the Astro based. Because Play-Doh is edible. It's not going to do much good, but it is edible. Yeah. Hello, Suzanne in 1999. I hope you're having a good holiday. Um. <laughs> Hive says, ah, a microscope. You can count in minutes the amount of time before a kid smashed the movable stage into the lens. Do you know I never did on mine? I've still got mine somewhere, I believe. Bloody hell. Or did I give mine away? But relatively recently, I think I had to remember my granddad buying me one many moons ago. I have not shit seen the Banshees of Inner Shirin yet, X Code Yellow. I was hoping to get to the cinema to see it, but I don't think I am, so I'm gonna have to catch that on some kind of digital contrivance. Right. Oh god. Nothing particularly interesting here except Fashion Wheel, which obviously was a thing which I imagine you were bored with in ten seconds. And terrifying creatures coming out of the toy box. What have we got there? A mop. Uh, some kind of jelly baby. A Cabbage Patch Kid. Roland Rat. And Nemo from Finding Remo. In a strange sort of out of time appearance there. Uh, anachronism. There we are. Anachronistic. That can mean forward as well as back. <laughs> Crucible 1 with the super obscure Sim uh, Simpsons reference there. Still Alive 93 says the newer Mr. Frosty model is basically a cheese grater. Sounds like a better plan. Mike Jevons put cheese in and it's grated quite well. I just want that taken out of context. Jevons put cheese in. 
I was going to say it sounds rude, but actually it just sounds like he's eating some cheese, which um, Mike probably does, to be fair. You know. Um, what actually was Fashion Wheel anyway? It always looked like a weird record player to me. Oh, my God. So it's basically you find the body of whatever person you want to make fashion of then you rotate this ring round, which is like their head and then the yellow one which is a hat or something i've not seen one up close so i'm having to uh, paraphrase slightly then you plop this thing down with some paper and you do like a brass rubbing and it shows you a crap picture i imagine it doesn't sound very exciting mm. Dark Squall says, I remember an aunt gave me a fashion wheel because she was disturbed that I, a small girl, was playing with Thomas toys and cars at the same time, all the time. I think I swapped it for a James Herbert book. Yes! <laughs> you win, Dark Squall. You absolutely win. Oh, my God. Right. The, I'm sorry, I, I just started looking at the knitting machine and wondering how you would use it, and it just threw me. It's like a proper fucking loom, just made of plastic. Enough, right. Enigma says, fashion designer was dial a pirate for girls. That's the way to explain it. Yes. Right, what we got here? Oh, I've never seen... Well, these are... Oh, that's new. That, that I remember, but... Straw Magic Tracks Fantasyland... So you make tracks for your cars? They go, no, oh, bloody haven't played that for hours. Speedsters, Stomper Speedsters, Twist Track Challenger set. Sounds cool. Looks like cars that sit on a little bit of um, plastic that goes around. The Stomper 4 Action Track set looks well groovy. I remember seeing this on an advert or something. They go around here and it pushes the little, um, uh, what you'd call it, little fence thing, which changes the direction of it. Shitty walkie-talkies don't work properly. Streak racing still constitutes an offence in Scotland. A car. God, I wish I could find a toy truck thing I had as a kid, but it was so generic. I don't think they ever will. It was just an orange truck. Uh, Escort XR3i racing. Thomas a tank engine. High-speed train. Pole position. And a Corgi bumper car set. Ah, the most important thing any child can have. A road layout mat to play with cars on. Mm, everybody has to have one. Boy, girl, Martian, super intelligent shade of the colour blue. All of them need one of those. It is the law. Uh, oh, now we're getting into it. Now we're getting into it. Look. That thing with the bloody wheels that sort of inflated so it could get over stuff. Well, it's not inflated. That bit moves in, doesn't it? Which squeezes that out. But yeah, The thing that makes its own bridges... How cool is that? And the weird thing that had claws that came out of the tyres. Flex Animal Cross Boss. Okay, then. Sorry, I'm going to notice something or I'll bloody forget. Done. Oh, no doubt, 42 had some of that plastic track you could put together for cars. Oh, my God. I have the Rainbow Road one. The size of it. I remember a friend would um, put it all the way down the stairs and then use it as like a massive um, jump. It was very cool. Oh, big tracks. I have two big tracks. One of the modern little ones and one of the modern large re-release ones. I don't have any of the classics. They'd be very pricey. Oh my god, I vaguely remember these. But I only remember them from this catalogue, to be fair. Rats. Robot anti-terror squad. We spit discs and have claw things. And have these slightly janky looking robots. Star shooter and Grapplor. Grapplor sounds like a rejected He-Man villain. My god. Um, these, do you know? I'm I'm desperately trying to think. Well, these were called Starriers in the U.S. Apparently, according to Jackal Blade. Interesting, interesting. 
Is not the same as the pizza launcher from Teenage Mutant Hero Tales. It's bloody similar, DJ. That's a fair point. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever saw any of these in the flesh. Obviously, they were widely available because they were in Argos. Mind you, the original Nintendo Entertainment System was widely available in Argos. You very rarely saw it because of the price of it. But these don't seem crazy expensive to me. Look, it's Protre Protectron and Blade. Blimey. And Zoids, but only the big two. Lord Protector and the mighty Zoidzilla. That was the coolest one, wasn't it? Although looking back now, I think I'm liking the look of um, Shoulder Cannon Gorilla a bit more. Which I'm pretty sure is a villain or an enemy from Strider, the old arcade game. But uh, bloody hell. One Chop says there's a Ninja Turtles toy called Grapplor 2. Oh, ho, ho. Right, hang on. We got, right, we've got to do a bit of looking into this now. Uh, pizza thrower toy. Teams Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's see if it's using the same moulds or something. No. It's very similar. No, it's not using the same moulds. It's exactly the same concept. I'll check the grap law now. And gra oh, oh ho Grap law is dangerous. Grap law from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a repaint of that. Yes. Yeah, these were called Starriers in uh, America, apparently. Zero Skunk, somebody said earlier. Um, it's interesting how people um, remember these a lot more than I did. For some reason, these were never around. Anything. But yeah, the Ninja Turtles Grap Law is totally a fucking repaint of this. Ooh, now we know. Two Primal Rage toys were repackaged for Ninja Turtles at one point. Sauron and one of the apes. Oh my god. Oh, Frankie84, let's see if we can help you here. Can anyone remember robot toys of this era? One was called Hacker, and he had big claws. Got proper excited as thought Ashton's finally revealed my long-lost question. Anyone know? Mm, anybody know this one? Hacker. Big clawed thing. Um... I'm going to check RoboForce because it's often something that people have forgotten. Um... Centurions! Oh my god! Yeah! The Centurions hacker. That could well be what you're thinking of there because he did have a big claw hacker, didn't he? Big, um, was he sort of a bald guy and he was all his robot bit was blue? If so, that is totally hacker from the Centurions. Oh, I do know the Robin Hood toys reused DC Flake. I have a box of them on the floor quite close to me, which I'm going through for a video soon. Yeah. Oh, Frankie says, no, it was just a robot. Oh, bugger. Yeah, hacker was only half robot. Um, let's see if we can find this. No, it's not one of the robots or RoboForce, as they're also known. Hmm. Battery powered, says Frankie84. You're oh, definitely not hacker then. Uh, hmm. Yeah, the video game Zero X Diamond. I remember one of the video games got like 90% in magazines, and I actually still have it on the shortlist for terrible old games. It's, I find it completely impossible to play and looking back at it over the years it seems like nobody could play it yet somehow it got really good it's a weird one that I don't think I'll ever fully get to the bottom of that to be honest there was a blue robot with a big gun Ugh. sorry Frankie 84 we're not coming up for much here um, Real King Doom so we looked into that and the pizza thrower is the same sort of principle but is entirely different mould entirely different however this thing was totally recoloured the Ninja Turtles line. So it's not coincidental. Yeah. Zed Knights, a bit like Zoids, but also Tommy says Oculus Orbis. Oh, I don't remember those ones. Ramen toys of re released Centurions. Oh my god, with the original moulds. But they did. I loved Centurions. But I only ever had two figures because they were like a tenner each, which was insane at the time. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, the manhole cover launcher enigma. Good shout. Oh, good work. Dark Ross 89. Can't complain for under a tenner. My God. Try Hacker under Z Knights, right? Thank you, Ock and Sorbus. Let's have a look, see if this is what Frankie 84 is looking for. Not that I will know, but. Um... Commander Frankie. Humbug. Have you fixed the battery in your BBC Master yet? Shit. Zany face. I really need to get that out. That bloody um, Varta might have completely eaten through the motherboard by now. Oh, God. Um... Oh, this is totally it. Frankie, mate. It is Hacker from Z Knights or Z Knights. Yeah. It's exactly as you describe and has massive claws. Yeah, I think we've found it. My God, yes, there we are, Frankie. Sorted. Respect you. Thank you, folks. Um, no, they are new moulds, modern tooling and articulations. Do you know I'm still quite interested? Oh, there we are. Ryan T, thank you very much for your subscription. Welcome. Uh... What else are we going to look at? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Man the hole. Uh, yeah, well, that's a bloody... I'll try to get a picture of it. Show me the pizza thrower again. The manhole one is different. Sewer lid launcher, that's it. Uh, the sewer lid launcher is... No, not the same thing again. Very similar. But, uh, yeah... Oh my god, Chef Rabbit 84. Good lord, 20 gift subs? That's more than 12. Thank you very much indeed. Bloody hell. They're going out to Shriveled Crumb, Wash of Ark and Fall, My Bash, Horatio Chin, Casper 399, Film Brain, Ghost of Gralton, Ian Jump, a humble squire, Dope Mastered, the Northeast Recluse, Cherenkov Light, Nooka the Nook, Freedom Linux, Post Gator, Snapman I Am, Metal Stew, Jim Bob Ryber, Aonuea, and Slippy V, blimey. And Dark Ross 89, thank you for your sub there, welcome. Crikey. That's very kind of you, Chef Rabbit, bless you. It's my Lieblings Fuck, GSV Ethics Gradient. <laughs> right. This is this has been kind of fascinating. That A, we've found the Ninja Turtles thing, which I didn't know. And B, the fact that these rats or Starriers things was actually quite popular. So I just don't remember any of them. The Retro Catapult was what it was called, says BC Wizard. Ooh. The Retro Catapult. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yeah. Look at that thing. So it fires things out of a bin. God. I can remember a mate, um, or actually my mate's younger brother, asking his parents for a cheap skate for Christmas, which was like the big skateboard thing the Ninja Turtles had in the toys, and his mother just being horrified that it wasn't very cheap at all. <laughs> oh, best of luck on eBay, Frankie. I bet it goes for a bloody fortune. Yes, Parzafel. I saw them all in a shop. Um, sort of the posh figure shop just in Norwich. It was uh, genuinely quite impressively built, most of them. Right. Oh, hang on. We, we do have to mention the Mad Masher Monster Machine. <laughs> that does look like endless fun. Probably shite. Right. <clears throat> oh, now we're talking. He-Man getting gooped. That's how he caught COVID from all that phlegm. Uh, is that... Oh my god, it's the Fright Zone! The one with the bloody um, weird glove puppet in it. It's where Hordak lived. In, in a cave. I think the, the concept behind the slime pit was if you got slimed, Hordak took over your brain or something. I don't quite know how that worked, but I'm sure it made perfect sense. Do 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 leech leech do 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 mantena mantena do 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 modulock modulock do 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 hordak hordak oh what an advert that is i know i've shown it on stream it took me ages to find it oh man i had all of these except grizzlaw i never had grizzlaw for some reason modulock i bought a modulock 
to show on um, in a video once and completely unannounced because they just sort of showed the box and said, oh, it's complete. So I bought it for like a few quid and it arrived and it was sealed like it had never been opened. So I didn't want to open it for the video. So then I had to buy a cheap loose module hook. <laughs> and I still haven't shown it in a video, I don't think. My God. Oh. Melanie Norfolk asks, what happened when you ran out of slime? There's a quick answer to that, Melanie. <laughs> it's best not to play with other people's ones, basically. And if you do get one at Carboot Sale, run under the tap. Um... Yeah, Leech was a great figure. Suction cup hands, not very good. Suction cup mouth, astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. Yeah, your parents were delighted as well. Damn straight, BC birds. No more get cleaning it out of the carpet. Oh. It's weird that they've only got the evil horde. And the horde stuff, like, you can't even buy He-Man at this stage. Unless it's on the next page. Hang on, hang on. No, you literally cannot buy a He-Man in 1986. Just the villains. Blimey. Snake Mountain had the microphone. I need to look that up on YouTube one day and see what that actually sounded like. Yeah. That's interesting, Red Comet. You're missing the one I was missing back in the day. Grizzly left. Mind you, they did do a load more Horde stuff later than that. The Horde Trooper. I never had a Horde Trooper, but it's one of my favourite designs from He-Man. Yeah. Yeah, the Origins line. There's several He-Man lines at the minute. And they're all quite good in their own way. Um, I've got a few of the... I think it's Origins, isn't it? The ones that are basically more articulated versions of these. I've got a bloody Battle Cat and a He-Man. It only costs like 10 quid for both. Ridiculous. Um, a lot of the leeches were sold to professional glazers. They made a mistake, though, because they used to cut holes in the glass like diamond. <laughs> Uh, I didn't really enjoy the snow. Wayne and Jutani, it was, uh, wasn't around very long, really. Ethan the Great. 12 months sub-anniversary. Massive salutes in your direction. Thank you very much. The microphone on Snake Mountain was the worst quality you could imagine. Hmm. I've got some bad ones from Poundland, Real Kingdom. But also some good ones, weirdly. Um, but... But Shandon says I got bitten by a real leech in York Dungeon. Please tell me it was part of the tour. <laughs> oh my god. Who's the red two headed toy SJ Pierce? And that is Modulock. A fantastic toy. Um There's also a robot version. I can't remember what that's called. The robot isn't as cool. It doesn't have the creepy organic vibe of this one. Yeah. Oh, I still haven't got round to the toys that made us, Parzafal. I can't wait to hear how Big Jim's tiger was painted green and became Battle Cat. <laughs> yes, I have seen those still alive 93, yeah. And those weird, here's a load of um, horror villains in the style of He-Man. Savage something it's called. I've got a pinhead that looks like a He-Man figure. It's very, very odd. Oh God, Brave Star was huge for a short period, son of a twitch. Very elaborate figures as well, yeah. DC Flake, I think I've got a copy of that somewhere. But I, I kind of want to show it on stream, but I find them so depressing. To this. Multibots, that's what it's called. Thank you, Ballet Dude. Uh, oh, yes. Xmas Tap Vid will be going up tomorrow, probably. BC Birds Eye. Um, this, I found this so odd, these Rambo figures. Just It's that whole wheelhouse of um, toys for children that are based on things that aren't anything toys should be anywhere or kids should be anywhere near rambo robocop the original alien aliens god sophie's choice the action figure line there's just no reason for it my god savage world that's it yes yeah i've got the i do have the blanker i've also got the m bison um i don't know why i got that i think it was cheap and the um pinheads i said earlier yeah Knock off Dino Riders in B&M, Marty Pa. Ooh, right, I need to go in B&M next week. Um, I'll have a look at that. Uh, 
What is the first example of that you know of, asks Rutier? Probably the original alien figure, which is like huge, just like 18 inches tall or something, and was actually taken off toy shelves because it was genuinely frightening children, I believe. My God. Hello, Noir. Nope, it's definitely not Sunday. I think. Yeah, oh, yes, Requiem for a Dream. The actual. They probably exist these days through that reaction line. My God. Yeah, I've got some Stranger Toys figures. Uh, Stranger Things figures. Future. Um, the Andalusian Pound Puppy. <laughs> That's a bloody hell. Deep cut, Kimimono. Um... Yeah, I've seen the Chat My one still alive recently. I was looking for um, uh, Doctor Who stuff for uh, Quentin Reviews. Um, found it at the end. I must actually send them to him, but I'm not going to send them over Christmas because dangerous. Right. Is there a Serbian film toy line? There is now, it's not. <laughs> oh my God, carbonated dipping jams is new from Toyco. Build your own human centipede. That is pretty much Modulock. Let's be honest here. My God. Birth of a Nation and Friends, Jim Bobro. You see, it's the Friends that makes that joke. It makes it so monstrous it is. Oh, God. Amiga Square says, the Brave Star 3030 figure. I'm trying to remember what that was. Oh, yes, I'm with you. Didn't really work when you attempted to transform him into his humanoid form. You literally just stood the thing in his hind legs, bent his forelegs unnaturally to hold a rubbish gun that looked nothing like the cool laser blunderbuss from the TV show. Yes. That horse's blunderbuss was bloody cool. Um, oh, Arcturus Deluxe, yeah. A bloody hell syndicate. You could run around with the Persuadertron, get yourself an army of maniacs, and then uh, go on and... yeah. Worst toy line idea, Tyrant King. The Tyrant King figures would be like the um, original Star Wars mail-away pack, the early bird thing. You would just get an empty box, and they'll say, in 15 years' time, we'll send you the figures. And then they do arrive. You just don't care anymore. Um, oh, we've got some Thundercats. Oh, Sector's back onto the um, glove puppets. Like the uh, thing in the Fright Zone previously. Oh, a friend of mine bloody loved um, Sector's. I'm sure he's still got several. General Spydrax. And whatever they're called. Oh, that's General Spy. Yes, it always confuses me that General Spydrax wasn't the spider guy. The spider guy is Trancula. No, he isn't. He's Skulk. Trancula is the thing he's riding. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, this is so... Oh, man. Very much of a time, but my God. Aren't Boss Fight Studios or somebody bringing back Sectors? Or oh, wasn't somebody going to bring back Sectors on Kickstarter and it didn't? They didn't get the funding or something. I can't remember. Oh. Jack or Blade says, "I don't know." Spiderex does ride a flying spider and he has eight eyes. Oh, he's supposed to be a spider, is it? See, I thought it was something else because it flies and spiders don't, and he looks more spidery than. Yeah, you're right. Spiderex probably is a spider, just a less spidery spider. Right. Bit weird if it had eight legs. Not many kids have eight figures on one hand. Fair point, Daxtron. But if they did, they'd have the best toy ever. Parzafel asks, do you still have the Thundercats edit where Lion O just repeats thunder over and over and over? Yes, I certainly do. Would you like to see it? <laughs> I can totally get it out. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, or can I? Shit. Oh, hang on. I may not actually have it to hand. Nope. It is gone, I'm afraid. Sorry, folks. You're just going to have to look at more of this. Uh, oh, well. You can see all the bullshit on the desktop. 
half of which are weird videos sent to me by people that we never bloody do anything with. Uh, but you never know, sometimes something works. Ballet Dude says a couple of years after Dino Rise, Dino Rise, the Dino models were sold by the Smithsonian Institute of Science Models. Please tell me with the insectoid riders and stuff. That would be amazing. No! Who said you could come back? Help! The button's not doing anything. Hang on, maybe I can override it with a stream deck. Yes! Stream deck saves the day. Fucking hell, it's a bit weird tonight. There's been an update to Streamlabs. I don't know if that's affected anything, but um, bloody hell. Right. Anyway, we're supposed to be looking at Thundercats, where Mumra is sitting on a giant wood plane. Hmm. Okay, then. The Thunder Tank that springs open. That's pretty cool. God knows what's going on there. And the figures. Fairly basic lion Owen and Mumra. Mumra, the ever-living! <laughs> oh, my God. The sword is pretty cool, though, yeah. No Safari Joe there. To yeah, there was a Safari Joe figure, but sadly not in this page, DC Flake. Yeah. Ouch, Atreyu, that is high bloody blood pressure. Deep breaths, mate. Have a, have a good rest. Crikey. Blimey, O'Reilly. See, OBS Studio never quite works for me, Arcturus. In theory, I like it much more, but in reality, it never quite bloody works properly, and Streamlabs always does, and I don't know why. It seems to have happened on every piece. Every time I build a new PC or change something majorly, I try it again, and it never quite works. Frustrating. Uh, it does work on one of my laptops better, though. Uh, the one I stream with from the very, very rare occasions from the sofa. Ooh, Mumra was just a poor man. Skeletor, says Raven. Ooh. I don't know, man. I mean, Skeletor really is a poor man's Thulsa Doom. So, you know, it's hard to say. But ultimately, every cartoon villain is just a poor man's Dr. Scarab from Bionic 6. <laughs> Safari Joe does it again. I used to have that on a button here, but um, yeah, it didn't get used very much. I think I replaced it with this. Goon will do. Which gets used a lot more often. Um, was it explained why a bunch of cats were fighting a mummy? Yes, DC Flake. It genuinely was. The first episode of the cartoon show totally explains it all. Basically, the Thundercats are in space and they land on a planet and they're all in hypersleep, except Lion Nose hasn't worked properly and he's aged. So whilst he's physically like 30, he's got the brain of a 12 year old or something it's all very odd very odd right oh, this particular image is one I looked at for bloody hours Switch, God, Switchblade is absolutely one of the coolest master toys never had it got it now I can oh. there it is I was going to say I thought it was on my bookshelf next to me and it is but I've moved it to the side I want to have three of them on my wall like ducks uh, God, I had so many of these. These were like the big thing for like two birthdays and two Christmases. So I had most of what was on this page. Uh, I never had Switchblade. I never had Boulder Hill. Obviously, that was too expensive. I had Rhino. Uh, I did not have Jackhammer, but I had all the others. This is a brilliant toy just because it spits the boat out so far when you pull the little um, things back here. You can get it halfway across the room if you do it hard enough. Oh, fantastic. Rhino is one of those things that, in theory, is just a fucking mess. You know, this comes off the back, and this bit springs, and then this opens, and there's the thing. But it had so many little cool bits, it was actually a really fun toy. Particularly the ejector seat, which um, is very good. This is such a shit transformation, Thunderhawk. The gullwing doors open, and it can fly, pretty much. But, fucking hell, it looks so 80s cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Still one of my favourites. Very hard to get one of these these days with the tyres still on. Most of the tyres have perished or come off these days. Mm. Uh, Rius, no, I never did get a playset for the third mask video, but I think I do have enough to do a third mask video. I should get round to that at some point. Um, Posfi Joe, Stephen. Thank you very much for your sub there. Welcome. 
Uh, yeah, Boulder Hill. It does look like a cool toy, but um, I've never seen it in real life. That was the first one I got. I got it for Easter, inexplicably, like an Easter gift. Um, the little one. I've still got the same fucking thing to this day. The um, action figure disappeared and I had to replace that, but it's still the same Condor bike. They haven't fully transformed it, look. They haven't pulled the little bit down on the stand. Oh, my God. Thickerless Cage, look who's of Sunnydale. That sounds terrifying. Oh, Keen Queen, don't tell me about 3D printed mask toys. I wouldn't be printing them. <laughs> oh, Mask and G.I. Joe kind of had crossovers a tray. Um, this has happened repeatedly over the years. Hasbro, in the early days of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, were desperate to make an entire cinematic universe of their stuff. There is a toy set where you've got Micronauts, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Mask, and Rom the Space Knight all in it. Oh, and Visionaries. I think there's a Visionary in there as well. Even though they're all such disparate things, they were desperate to sort of force them together. Um, it never, They never really made it work, mainly because their G.I. Joe films never quite worked, did it? Hmm... And, uh, oh no, Ballet Dude. Watching the animated series just made it to the crappy racing episodes. Yeah, Mask stopped all the cool stuff and just started racing against Venom in the third series of the cartoon. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Ugh. One of the big things they had to change when they were trying to mash together all the universes is Matt Tracker is now looks completely different. Matt Tracker's a black guy now. And it's really obvious why. If you ever put Matt Tracker next to Duke from G.I. Joe, because they're the same fucking person. It's like, yep, one of these has got to change, and we've kind of already established Duke more. So uh, you, you, they're just bloody clones, basically. Good God. Oh, the mask theme from Shuki Level. The mask is like... That's got to be one of the best cartoon intros, mask. Absolutely. Yeah, Mensky says they've had a few Matt Tracker G.O. Joe figures in Lawrence. Yeah, they did the specialist Tracker one back when he was still exactly the same as Duke. Yeah, bloody hell. Visionaries, that was cool, Visionaries. I like that. The problem with the action figures are slightly bigger than three three-quarter inch scales. They never quite sort of worked with anything else. But, um, good stuff. Oh, Pole Position. That may be the best cartoon intro, actually. Pole Position. Dr. Zock says, and I didn't know this, there was a set of Micro Masters, the little mini Transformers they made to sort of um, go up against Micro Machines, sold online by Hasbro that included a pair that are based on mask vehicles. Oh, cool. See, I never saw Jason the Wheeled Warriors. and It was totally odd over here and quite a big thing, but somehow I never saw it. A um, friend of mine with a sector was fucking love Jason the Wheeled Warriors. They'd often talk about it, but somehow I never saw it. Was the Street Fighter movie a better G.I. Joe movie than the G.I. Joe movie, asked DC Flake. Yes, is the answer to that. It's arguably a better G.I. Joe movie than any of the later G.I. Joe movies as well. But the original G.I. Joe cartoon film is a absolute shitstorm. It really is. Absolute God. Starts off amazingly though, and we've, we've I'm sure we've shown that on stream before. The um, absolutely bloody brilliant um, intro with the whole uh, Cobra song and uh, G.I. Joe coming out of nowhere to blow them up. And oh, I can imagine American kids being so excited in the cinema watching that, and then you have to sit through the rest of it with Cobra Commanders. I was once a man. And, oh, God. We mention this every so often, but it's no less true. I'm just going to quickly search for my Thundercats thing. Where has that gone? Hmm. Oh, I found it. Yep, pretty sure I found it. Yep. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Sod it. Let's do that before we continue, actually. Sorry, guys, I keep showing you my shitty desktop. Um, let's get back to that. It's a lot prettier to look at. Blop. Tell me you don't hear Thundercats are on the loo. <laughs> I 
I have never heard that one. Oh, God, Infaceables, Sabrina Ibina. They, they were weird toys I never saw at the time. They were very interesting to do later, yeah. Good God. How many browsers do you need? About 400 Macobster for all different things, logged into different stuff. Oh, God. Ugh. And no, I will never clean up the desktop because I never actually see the desktop. So I never think about it. It just ends up with a load of installed shit on it. Because um, I literally never look at it. It just ends up covered in uh, multiple windows and stuff. Um, what's a Samo flange? I don't know, Atreyu, but it sounds great. Do do do. Thundercats. Right. How do I. What is the best way to get this up and running? Uh. Oh, hang on. That's the talking bit. Bloody hell. Is anything going to work properly this evening? Oh, that's fine. I'll sort it out. Right. What I'm going to do is copy it to the live stream one. Ah, here we are. Perfect. The most annoying video in the universe. God, it just fades out as if he keeps going forever. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you for the bits there, DC Flake. Not enough bits of the world, I'm afraid. And Ghost of Grolton. Thank you for the bits there as well. You know what they say? There's no thunder without thunder, thunder, thunder. <laughs> oh, ballet dude visionaries were cool. Oh, I liked visionaries. I now need to look up which one's the dagger assault vehicle. Oh, the, sp the evil spiky boy. Oh, just pick up one off eBay. They're only £450. Bloody hell. Sweet Jesus on a tricycle. Madness. Absolute madness. Right. Let's get rid of that. Oh, God. What's playing in the background? Ah, uh, you can't hear it. Rolly and Rita have started again. Bloody hell. Right, that's that stopped. Whew. Right, we need to get back into looking at bloody toys. Whoop. Could heat the house for a week for £450. Yes, until the prices go up again next month, Con M. Mm -mm -mm. Does Stinko still have its smell or has that faded better? Famously, carbonated dipping jam. As you may be aware, uh, Stinko was uh, fragranced with patchouli oil which was a popular thing for dads to wear at some point in the 1970s, and some of them still wore it into the 1980s. So some people's dads literally smelt like stinkle. Amazing. Holy fuck. Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. That's a one, Atreyu. I remember watching that um, on VHS back in the day. I think we rented it, actually. Oh, oh God. Thunder, the Thunderpants spoof of Around the Bend. Yeah, Mega Square. That was a one. Oh, God. Stinkle wasn't the toxic. It was the one, it was Merman, basically, but painted like a skunk. Yeah. Oh, dear. It was all the stoners in college in the 90s. Oh, God. So it went from dads to stoners, like it was of Sunnydale. Your guarantee of quality. Oh. The Royal Game of Ur. 
Oh my god, that's the one that's really difficult to uh, sort of work out what's going on with, isn't it? Oh. Bloody hell. Noir says, ooh, hot hippie dad smelling like patchouli. I need a time machine. <laughs> but wait till Stinkor came out. Oh, ruined that one for them. Uh, anyway, these are fucking great. and Everybody should own 20 of them. Uh, do you know, looking back now, God, that was a cool one. I remember a friend had that. Really love Switchblade. I mean, it kind of doesn't make any sense because they're all supposed to look innocuous until they turn into battle mode. But I mean, that helicopter looks, if anything, more lethal than the bloody jet. But uh, still amazing. Right. Next up. Hello, Fire Truck Deluxe 2.0. <laughs> Welcome. How you doing? Hot hippie dads. No, jazz wizards don't count, Dr. Zock. Uh, Oh my god, look, Metroplex. Oh, they're having to explain that you don't get two toys, that then it transforms from one to the other. Amazing. Oh, real, this is interesting. I didn't know this from the Real Kingdom. The Royal Game of Ur only has rules because about 7,000 years ago, a dude who was obsessed with it had the walls of his tomb decorated with the rules. Bloody hell. Blimey. Metroplex is kind of shit, isn't it, now I'm looking at it. Look, this is just literally, here's a squashed... Here's a big, square, slightly odd-looking robot. Here it is squashed, and here it is squashed up in a slightly different way. And also that weird stealth car thing that came with it, and that thing's awful. Quite like the Tango. Um, Jetfire is clearly like... Oh, God, what's it from? It's not Gundam, is it? It's one of the other ones. Um, oh, that was rubbish, DC Flake. Yeah, you'd go... And if you were lucky, they'd bring out the five and ask you which one you wanted. If not, you'd just get one at random and then just get your money back because it wasn't the one. Yeah. Robotech! Thank you, Ballet Dude. That's it. It was Macross originally, apparently. Bloody hell, there's so many of these things, isn't it? Oh. Good old Transformers. 50,000 toy lines smashed into one. He just looks like jazz, but fucked up. And there is Jazz. Smokescreen. I remember the name, but weirdly, I don't remember the design at all, even though it's quite uh, highly coloured. Shattered Irony. 14 months. Thank you very much. I've still got a Metroplex, which is boxed. Ooh, sweet. I bet that's worth a lot of money these days. My God. Why has Starstream got a wizard's hat on? Look, they've done Thrust correctly. They haven't done Starscream. Weird. Argos has a load of Ken aliens, says Wayland well Yutani. Interesting. I got um, a load of those in God Smith's toys, I think. Inferno. Do you know Inferno is one of the very few original Transformers I never saw. That and Scourge I never saw back in the day. This one, I've got it now. I got it for like three quid at a bloody toy fair a few years ago. It's interesting how it... Um, it it's weird. It sort of it almost forms a shell around itself. That one. This was my plane. You you know, you everybody only got one Decepticon plane. I went for Thrust for some reason. Um, mainly because it's got cool wings, I think. Yeah, I... I th Red Comet 009, Defenders of Space, I think is next on our list to watch with it. <laughs> Cyclonus. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. Oh, I remember when Megatron was a gun and it made no sense, Gaster Tucson. But he'll always be a weird Luger or Mouse or whatever he was to be. Right. Oh, more of them. Oh, we're into Galvatron territory here. I think I picked up a cheap Galvatron, if I remember. Yes, I did. So I remember that weird thing spinning around. Galvatron surprised me because the robot looks a bit shit and the other modes are absolutely terrible. Um, it, doesn't, it just looks like 
I don't know, some bit of a particle accelerator or something. Very odd. Uh, BC Birdseye, I think you were describing Cosmos. I have one of those on my uh, desk in the office. A Cosmos and a Sea Spray. The weird Ultra Magnus. This was so weird to us when we first saw this, like in the Argus catalogue. You're like, well, it's the Albino Optimus Prime, but it has like stuff that sticks on him to make him a bit... Very confusing to us children. This one, he's... Hmm, very wide-legged stance there and transforms into a right piece of shit. What's he called? Cup car. <laughs> Oh my god! Worst name ever. Um, Hot Rod, that's more like it. And Blur Car. What? More interesting Cybertron design there, but... Good god. El Nico Man says, Because in Japan it was Optimus Prime with special armour. They changed the name for outside Japan, didn't they just? My god. You've got the touch, Wookie G34. Um... Number 12 looks like a poor man's Scout Walker. It really does, doesn't it? A very poor man's Scout Walker who has found it in a bin along with a blue ribbon biscuit. Hmm. Yes, I imagine that Slag has been um, renamed these days. They've got these wrong. 15 isn't Grimlock. 16 is Grimlock. That one's slag. I had three of these. I had those three. One, two, three. Bloody loved the Dinobots. Never got um, Snarl, I think that one's called. Or is that one Sludge? No, that's Sludge. That's definitely Sludge. I had some of those Snarl. Slag is called Slug now. Yep. That makes more sense. I mean, I appreciate they were going for the um, sort of slag metal meaning, but... Uh, yeah, it wasn't great. I remember my cousin being horrified that in my Transformers sticker album there was a character called Slag. Oh my god! What the bloody hell is... I was going to say, what's happened there? What hasn't happened there? Is any real transformation? That's got to be like Chargertron, where it just goes forward and springs up, surely. Runabout. I don't remember these at all. I don't remember that in this catalogue. I remember everything else here. No swoop. Shit, there was swoop, wasn't there, Gamari? Yeah, I didn't have swoop either. That was the Pteranodon, wasn't it? Scoop swoop was skipped. G1 in Europe. Ah, that'll be why then. I probably just saw it in like the bloody cartoon. And also, Chunky Lunchbox. Which is a great porn name. Right. Next. Oh my god. More Transformers. Transformers were big in 86. Oh, I had that one. The cool A10 thing. I don't think I ever saw that one. I had this six changer where none of the rope sort of um, modes really looked like anything. That one appears to be a bit better, to be honest. Um, I don't remember that one. Or those two ones at all. Oh my god. Yeah, the stunter cons and the bootleg transformers, that was good. Good cool. I love the bootleg ones of those. Just because you get the whole set, you know. I think it was called Sandstorm, if I remember. Um, Blitzwing. Sandstorm, yes. Yeah, the stunter cons, proper ones. These are the aero cons, the, the special aerial bots, okay. Don't really remember those ones. Huh. But the main thing is we can watch a rival from Cybertron on VHS because yes. God, looking at this, the amount of ones that they just couldn't transform properly <laughs> for the catalogue. Bloody hell. And now go bots. Holy shit. I had that, but it was much smaller and a brown colour. Obviously a, a smaller version. These are the bigger ones here, aren't they? I don't think I ever saw any of those. 
Um, uh, these, I don't really remember any of this. I remember that a friend had that. But this, I don't remember at all. Except, well, I've, I kind of remember it from this page, to be honest. Massive girl was saying, oh, and a grandstand converters. Which, again, I've only ever seen on this page of the catalogue. Bloody hell. Dark Squall says, I was doing an anime convention a few years ago and got talking to the lady running the table next to us. We were talking about Transformers. Turns out she was referenced in one of your videos. The Poundland Transformers. Yes, I remember her. She was the Poundland worker who told you about them in the shop. Yeah. Remember her on the tills giving me the info. I forgot bloody half of it. That was super useful, though. this can for um ironically gobots are now owned by hasbro and are considered part of transformers bloody hell gobots the cindy of transforming robot toys yes bloody hell tell you what um gobot i had that i wish i'd kept you know, i got it in a set and it was crasher the black sort of racing car thing that was big in the cartoon of GoBots, but I never saw separately. I wonder if that's rare. Well, it's been gone probably 35 years now, so, um, yeah. Psykill. I've got a really nice Psykill in the office, but it's a knockoff. It's, um, but it's really well sort of designed and made. Go bots were before Transformers, says Rikutik. Oh. The motorbike go bot dies in every Transformers camera pin it. <laughs> Poor old psycho. Uh. God, I wish I'd kept that old crasher toy. Don't know why. I was convinced it was rare at the time. Might actually be. There we go. Ah, now we're into the real stuff. My little pony, bendy and bony. What is the doll thing there? I didn't know there were humans. Megan and Sundance. Ah, the film festival pony. Um, that, that just looks really sad with its snug fit. What a snug... My God, is that like a nappy? Do you have to put nappies on your ponies? That doesn't work. Yeah, it is. Bloody hell. Ah, the Rock Lord. Such a weird idea. Let's have a robot that just turns into a lump. <laughs> yep, that's where the ponies live. Upstairs in a house with no stairs or lift. Yep. Perfect. Gobots were originally marketed as robo-machines in the UK. Good God. Don't remember that, Mensky. I vaguely remember Robo Machines being a name, but I remember no details of that whatsoever. Good God. Atreo 2088. Yes, uh, it's not that expensive. You have to get it from Kickstarter, but you do have to bear in mind that apparently, this is why I didn't back it, I must admit, um, you don't get the screen with it. Um, you have to order the screen later for extra money. Um, which is probably fine, but it just increases the risk and worries me a bit, I don't know. But it's going to be a cool thing. It takes the bloody input from anything and makes it look decent. You know. Master of the Universe did have Rock Lord-like dudes. One of them was called Rockon. And I think the other one was Boldar or something. Yeah. Bloody hell. Anyway. More ponies. These ones with gossamer wings. That one's getting married to Satan. Um, you know, what's going on here? More ones with nappies. Ah, the shitty cheap Wendy houses, which were basically one shite bit of plastic over a frame. I hope they still make those. I feel like it's a very cheap way for a kid to have a little place to play in. Rock on and Tom. Oh, my God. Noir says, I remember having a strawberry-scented My Little Pony. For a portion of my childhood, me and my friends were smelling a horse's ass. <laughs> I remember 
Choice of my childhood, we would sniff a horse's ass. My God. Um, Enigma says, you do indeed think it's one of the reasons RMC wanted nothing to do. Yeah, when it's all together as a thing, I think that'll be a lot more interesting. But it's just, um, I think the bloke who makes it is genuinely extremely sound. I think it's going to be fine. But it's just, you've got that extra kind of, if something does go wrong, you've now got two stages, you know what I mean? But that's just me being paranoid from previous bloody kickstarts, maybe. I don't know. Right. Uh... Strawberry shortcake was smelly. I never knew that, Gamara. Now you've said it, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> BC Berto says, My pal had shoes that smelled like bubblegum on the inside. Well, for a wee bit at least. <laughs> God. <laughs> That's such a weird concept. It's not going to last, is it? Oh dear. Chris, this certainly is an old Argos catalogue, 1986 specifically. Uh, acorn green fucking hell I've mentioned this before I know but I have s no memory of this toy particularly but I have such an incredibly strong tactile memory of what this feels like I think I didn't have any of the I think that I picked it up at like a car boot sale when I was very young for like no money whatsoever actually it's probably been a jumble sale oh my god iron ruster 22 months. Thank you very much indeed. That tree was at every car boot sale for 20 years. Yeah, I think that was it. Girl of the Dragon 32. Yeah, with all the bits missing. But my God, I just remember the sort of weird leafy texture of touching that. I never knew what it was from. I'm, I still don't know what Acorn Green is now. It's got a look of a cartoon to it. But whether it was a cartoon, I don't know. Probably were UK only Ritar and Egg. Probably. Uh... But yes, yeah, somehow this treehouse playset was everywhere. I wonder if it was released elsewhere as well, because it was so ubiquitous. And yet I've got no memory of this stuff at all. Mm. Uh. Oh, Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright, her neck's too fucking long. That's not the theme tune, but uh, that was the problem. Rainbow Bright, giraffe-necked freakazoid. God, I remember those that little thing she had with the face printed on it. I don't know why I remember that specifically. And the Get Along Gang, I have no memory of whatsoever. Weird thing about Rainbow Bright is you only ever saw the bigger doll. I think the girls had that. I don't know. For some reason, the small one didn't seem to sell. Hmm. Right. Oh my god, snuggle bums. I remember getting a snuggle bum off eBay for an ex-girlfriend who had um, desperately tried to remember this weird toy she had as a child. It was that one, called Mama something, if I remember. Yes, Mama Brightly. Yep. Yeah. Lights up when you squeeze it, kind of. And Papa Gently. What are these things? We don't know. They look like complete mutants. Some transformations were different in the Japanese robot, which is interesting, but I do crane robot. I will do later. I'll make a note. Crane robot. These, I don't... These are part of this, apparently. God, they're just weird. They're just lumps. They don't do anything. They're completely inarticulate. Hmm. The ones at the bottom are so weird and cute, says not. They are bloody weird, aren't they? Well, they're all. I thought they were similar things, but they're all different designs. Like, God, I bet if you found one these days, I'd have all matted hair. This is the second hand one I bought off eBay years ago. It's in the box. It was really cheap as well. They're probably everything goes for a bloody fortune these days. Uh, these toys all have hair brushing in common because Sabrina. That's about the only thing you could bloody do with them, to be honest. Yeah. Nope, the snuggle bums didn't giggle when you shook them. Most of them were just lumps. Some of them lit up when you squeeze them. I think actually it might just be Mama Brightly. No, sorry, Papa Gently does as well. Oh my god, Wuzzles. Half bee, half bear, butter bear. Half hippopotamus, half something else. Half koala, half owl. Half tiger, half raccoon. Half kangaroo, half elephant. 
half bee, half lizard. Oh, no, that's a bee. So that is a butterfly and a bear. Okay, and a bee and a thing. Bloody hell. Yeah, owl bear. Fuck. <laughs> it's it's the cute baby owl bear. Oh dear. Mega Square says there were a while ago plans for a spoofy comic called Rainbow Brute about brightly coloured fairy barbarian as equine sidekick known as I kid you not, my girthy stallion. Holy shit. So <laughs> Okay then. These are reminding me of Popples, which were weird little soft toys you could turn inside out and they just look like a sack. God, that's weird, isn't it? Um and the gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. Exciting fact. The Gubby Bears theme tune is sung by Danny Elfman's son, who went on to be the lead singer of um, Toto for a short period, but not while they were famous. Why do I know this? I genuinely don't know. Oh, Jibber Jabber, my God's still alive. I remember trying to get one of those. We got one in the end for um, Ryan, cousin Dan from Barshans. Um, God, he loved that thing. Right. Commissar Ludfang had the popple that turned into a basketball. Oh. Interesting. Rich Cage Gajira says that there was a gritty version of a couple of wuzzles in a recent DuckTales series. Bloody hell. Thought it was John... Oh, was it John Williams' son, DC Flake? Was it? And I've got it confused with Danny Elfman. Oh, he could be right. Hmm. Yeah, I believe the gummy bears are supposed to be related to the sweets in some way, yeah. Oh my god, the acorn green tree is still available to this day as the magic tree of the chlorophyll. Oh my god. I want to buy one, run my fingers over and go, oh yeah, I remember that, and just give it to somebody else. <laughs> magic tree chlorophyll. And spell that carefully, bloody hell. Aaron Fielder says, I was desperate for a jibber-jabber as a kid. My parents said they were sold out everywhere, which is true. Yes, they, they bloody were. I can uh, um, confirm that. But many years later admitted they never actually looked because they weren't having that noisy shit in this house. It would have killed you by the end of the day. <laughs> he also wrote all the original Jabber's Palace music, so I just lapped it out. I never knew that, Mentus. Bloody hell. Huh. Right. Are we nearly at the end? Oh, we've got the cab. There's a popple. Look. See, it's a little cute bear. And he has like a sack on its back and you turn it inside out. And it looks like that. Popples. Floppies, I don't really remember. Weird string dogs. Great way to get dirt permanently in them. And of course, care bears. The proper care bears and the weird little ones that looked a bit mutant. Snice Sootles, Snootles, yeah, Arcturus Deluxe. Snice, s fucking hell. Snice, s God, I can't even say it. Snice Snootles and the Rebo Band, named after Max Rebo, the weird thing on blue sack of dwarves that's playing the keyboard. Oh, my God. Real Kingdom says the Wuzzles are like the only reason Disney still has an animation arm. The series vanished after a year, but got them enough experience to bash out either Gummy Bears or Ducktailed that convinced Disney to keep it after all. Bloody hell. Noir, Noir says, My mother and father probably risked their lives when Cabbage Patch Kids came out and got me one for Christmas, and I hated the thing. Still think they're ugly and don't know they're Oh, God. Remember the jibber jab was hard to get, but the real bastard was trying to get a Buzz Lightyear. Oh, my sister managed it in the end, but um, but it's one of those things Ryan fucking loved Buzz Lightyear, so it was worth the the effort to sort of get him one, you know. He was also of the right age when Teletubbies were impossible to get, and they were the big Christmas toy. Fortunately, he wasn't that much into them, so we didn't really try, you know what I mean? Um, it would have just been a waste of time for all involved. His favourite Teletubby was the yellow one. I don't know why I remember that. Um... I also don't know their names. Seen them on car boots now for very little money, says Lima. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, Ryu, because you literally had to bloody queue for the buzzers, didn't you? Yeah. Tickle Me Elmo is notoriously difficult. I don't know Amstrad. I don't know. I wasn't, uh, wasn't involved in that one, but they were very popular. Weren't they? Tinky Winky was the yellow one, apparently, according to Locutus. Interesting. 
once read a thing about Tracy Arnold and parents were offering uh, intimate favours for the last Tracy Arnold in stores. Bloody hell, Aaron. Why don't they just make their own, like Blue Peter told them? Deary me. Lion's Eye Diamond says, my dad went through one hell of an adventure to get me a Turbo Man one year. Yeah, but to be fair, a lot of it was because Sinbad spent the whole time trying to nick it off him. When your dad got it fair and square, you know. Oh, dear. Loved you in The Phantom Menace, by the way. Uh, spitting, that was a cool trick. Right. Noir Bardo says, wasn't there a recall with Tickle Me Elmo where it sounded like he was swearing or something? Good God, that rings a bell. There was something like that, wasn't there? <laughs> Gluttony, pride, wrath, or tinky winky. Yes, species. Wizard. Sorry, not wrath. Wrath, of course. Fire of wrath. Oh, dear. Oh, this is horrible. Rich Davison says, I had a Wuzzles Bumble Lion. Sadly, my mice got into the bag of soft toys in the loft and ate his face. God. The Turbo Man toys look so shit. Yeah, they did produce that Turbo Man toy, like, at the time, didn't they, in small numbers, but it did look awful. God. It didn't look good in the film either, really. There were Pee Wee Herman dolls that accidentally had Fre Freddy Krueger voice boxes in them. My God, DC Flakes, a gag of that in The Simpsons, isn't there, where Barbie's like, my spidey sense is tingling. Ah... Ballet Dude says, I've got almost a full set of Care Bears, except for the stupidly expensive ones that are a couple of hundred pounds each. Holy shit. Ballet Dude, is that like the big cuddly ones like we're seeing now, or is that the little um, plastic uh, hard ones? Dina Marsh, my sister had a Teddy Ruck spin bear. Oh my god. It recorded your voice or whatever and played it back and it lip synced. Yeah, it had tapes that told you stories, uh, Teddy Ruck spin. There was something that recorded your voice and played back called RG Bear or AG Bear or something. So you'd say, hello, AG Bear, and it'd go, me, 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 me. Like it was taking the piss. Little bastard. Anyway, uh, funny story is that kids were snooping for Xmas presents. We found it, messed around with it, and stashed it back in my mum's wardrobe. Cube Christmas Day. Sister had to act surprised, but not surprised my mum and stepdad, who had Teddy Ruxman play back all our shenanigans. <laughs> oh, it could record the TV. No, they could record. Bloody hell, dude. Oh. Have you seen R.L. Stein's Garbage Pale Kids books? No, still alive. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, my God. Ah, so these ones. Cheers, but they did. Just as a matter of interest. It always felt like those little plastic ones were weirdly collectible, but I've never seen one of them. Oh, Jim Henson's Storyteller. Classic, a true. Absolute classic. And the second series of Michael Gambon and the Greek Myths. Do you recall a toy bear that was able to respond to a VHS tape you played on the TV? Oh, God, there were loads of things like that, Chris. There is a weird talking dog one. Um, Peter, Nostalgia Nerd, has one in, like, a actual... Um, I don't know how to describe it. Like, a retail display unit. Very odd, very odd. Sergeant Bloopface says, my sister got a TV teddy, which was like Teddy Ruxman. That's the one you're thinking of, Chris. Holy shit. TV teddy, yeah. Ruxman, but talked along with VHS tapes. I hated it and secretly killed her by shoving pennies down his throat. <laughs> oh, my God. Nostalgia and I just did a video on them. Oh, shit, I missed that. Oh, I need to catch up. I'm bloody about months behind with videos. Next. Oh, my God. There it is, folks. The Petster. As seen on um, the intro to this stream sometimes. But more importantly, um, on Bird, uh, Bullseye as one of the prizes. Oh, my God. What have we got? Axlon Cat Pets. I've got one in the garage. Got to do something with that at some point. Rainbow Smarty Bear. I hate him already. Christ. Speak 16 phrases in hundreds of combinations. Ask him questions and his shaggy eyebrows move. His eyes closed and opening and oh, shut up. Baby talk jibbers and then you hate it. Excellent. Adam talking. That's AG Bear. Fuck. I definitely knew that was in Argos. The most cuddly, chatty friend to have around. He listens, listens patiently to what you say, then responds in his own bear language. Hello, AG Bear. Beep, 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 beep. You taking the piss? Beep, 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 beep. You're going to get a fucking slap in a minute. Beep, 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 be
Um, God, that caterpillar's bloody weird, isn't it? God, it's quite creepy, actually. Ugh. That baby looks like it's some sort of dead alien. God, what's on this bloody mutants coming up? Right, we'll, we'll get... What's that bloody else going on with that? Right, let's just finish and just read about number four. Adam Talking Bear. Plush, soft character capable of recording and playing back sound. Squeezing his paw turns the talking friend on. Um, okay then. So that is a watch hidden under a peacock or something. This thing is horrifying. The inhuman centipede. DC Flight, yeah, God. Oh, bloody hell. Moogle Mania says that freaking caterpillar gave me the shuddering fear as a kid. Yeah. Bloody hell. The baby in the carriage looks like a storyboard from the Rings of Power. <laughs> yeah, they weren't allowed to produce this bit. Um... Oh my god. Watchimals. Is that what that is, Noir? A watchimal. Hasbro Peacock Watchimal. Just lift the peacock's head to reveal a three function digital watch for boys or girls. There was one with legs. Legs a lot. Oh, I need to hang on, I need to look this up. Legs a lot. Legs a lot. Watchimal. Oh, yep, here it is. Oh, I can't find one that isn't in the box. I can't find them. Oh, hang on, is this thing legs a lot? No, this is lots of legs. Oh, God. What's going on? <laughs> Everything's got the same bloody name. Uh, oh, it is the caterpillar. Oh, I'm with you now. Gotcha. It's a bit creepy. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not getting that. I don't like the Doctor Who scarf either. Ah, the squashy unpleasantness of Glowworm, which uh, good old Ash Frith does love. Does love. And, of course, skipping this absolute abomination, we've got Roland Rat, who I very much doubt ever escaped from the confines of the UK. Yeah, Rat fans, yeah. Roland Rat, pretty much mostly popular, I think, because it was so easy for children to do an impersonation of him. Yeah, Rat fans, yeah. Oh, my God. What was his, um, was it Kevin, his mate who is the number one rat fan? Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, I hate you, butler. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Bob Ryder, I never put that together, Paul. Poor Kevin the Habs. Kevin the Gerbil, that's it, yes. Wasn't there one called Errol? There must be, because I nicked its name for the um, off-screen character we occasionally refer to who clearly doesn't exist. Um... Oh, my God. Errol was a hand. There we are, yep. Yeah. Was it a little grey thing, wasn't it? Um... Damn it, I just tried to... Um... Oh, God, I've got to mess up, mess up the chat now. What's that? Oh, God, the chat's gone mad. Bloody hell's going on. There we are. Ryo Gazuki says... That... Oh fucking hell. sorry, my I oh my my chat is broken entirely. This is extremely annoying. Ryo Gazuki says there was a Lion King talking book where folk thought Rafiki was singing squashed bananas up my ass. You mean he wasn't? Oh, I've got off the Lion King. Bloody hell. Uh Errol was Welsh for some reason. That rings a bell now you've said that. And, oh my god, right, we're leaving it here. Hey, I don't know what's going on there. We've got bloody Cabbage Patch Kids and the horrifying Pound Puppies, which is now making me think of that awful knockoff Poundland game with the vertically chinned Pound Puppies wandering around. Oh my god. Just look like they're all died or something. Absolutely awful. Oh, and these things, Wrinkle. Friendly furry pet with unique hands-in-puppet feature. He has never been a glove puppet before, is there? Which makes it fun to play with. Each with own dog tag. Height 17 inch. Yours will differ from illustration. Just weird wrinkly-faced dog things. Great. Bloody hell. 
will you? Roland Rat was everywhere, absolutely everywhere for bloody years. Really was. Oh, you can't escape him, Rat fans. You can't escape Mind Flayer Dogs. That's it, Clockwork. Oh, my God. Is that a bone in his mouth or a dicky bone? That's a really good question, Melanie. I thought it was a dicky bow, but I think it's a bone. Because I think, is that a tongue or something? Or is that the bow tie? I'm very confused by this. Very confused by it. Ah, a Jacobian plank. <laughs> Specificity is always funny. Yeah. Well, or it helps at the very least. Pound puppies came back again, says Rich Dev. For some reason, pound puppies are in sex-based terms. I think we'll let that off. Um, Jinx83. Um, Roland Rat wasn't on Sky. Roland Rat was um, ITV, if I remember. Sky was DJ Cat, which uh, was much less famous. Mm. <laughs> Imagine unwrapping a wrinkle on Christmas morning. Yeah, you'd wrap it up again, wouldn't you? Ah, uh, my God. Right. Enough of this, uh, Gubbins. I don't think there's anything else super interesting here. Now. Oh, God. We are getting onto Gem and the Hologram dolls. Hang on. These have got to be shown because of reasons. Oh, there's She-Ra, but no Golden Girl. But uh, we've got to... Hang on. Get this back here. Gem. Gem is excitement. Ooh, Gem. Gem is something else. Something or other, blah, 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 blah. Ah, and the Misfits, they're more important. We are the Misfits. Our songs are better. We are the Misfits. And we're going to get her. I don't know what they meant by that. Um, these dolls are kind of generic-faced awful things. At least that one's got a keytar. That's something. Holy shit, that car. And it connects to a speaker. Oh, it's with working radio. And the speaker opens up to form like a weird wardrobe. Why would she have a wardrobe? Weren't all the um, clothes holographic? Hmm. Yeah, the Misfits are an actual band. A very different band. Abstract. <laughs> wasn't there? Wasn't it like a skeleton? Their um sort of mascot. I believe they keep doing reaction figures of it, actually. Anyway. Ballet Dude says, let's not mention the live-action movie of Gem from a few years back. No. Very, very bad. Very bad indeed. Um, shame, because apparently... I still need to go back and watch it. Apparently the Josie and the Pussycats film they made years before was quite good. It's sort of um, self-referential and quite funny. But uh, there we are. Jinx83, yeah. Um, the thing is, Roland Rat... Well, it did have an afternoon show after a while, but Roland Rat was TV AM, so he's only on in the mornings in general, you see. Mm. Ow. The Gem comic is supposed to be excellent, says Henry Slinkwood. Interesting. But is it outrageous? Truly, truly, truly outrageous. <gasps> Melody and Mr. Mooncat both say Roland Rat defected to the BBC. Oh, I didn't know that. How could he do such a thing? Mm. <laughs> Roland Rat is a traitorous soul. And on that bombshell, Octirus, <laughs> let's go and have a bit of a break. And then we'll return and do something else and then end the stream. That is the way these things work. Yeah, I'll move the windows about so it's a bit easier for me to see what's going on. That's better. Roland did have a single, probably more than one Commissar Lude fan, but only the first one charted. That's generally the way it goes with things like that. Uh. Right. 
Don't worry, we've got plenty of Christmas adverts to keep you interested until I come back from getting a drink. I shall see you in a few minutes. But until then, remember, don't buy any of these products. They're not available anymore. This is like from the 80s or some shit. The Empire Theatre presents Cinderella, starring Windsor Davis and Melvin Hayes. Tickets from Rushworth, Whitechapel, Liverpool. Phone 051-709-6699. A Merry Christmas for me. The Roy Hall Christmas Spectacular is now on. Knockout prices on the North's most comprehensive Christmas stocks at Roy Hall Cash and Carry, Ashton Old Road, Manchester. Open seven days, trade only. It's Christmas at Stratford Arndale Centre. Bring the family for all your Christmas shopping. There's free parking for a thousand cars. Stratford Arndale Centre, the easy way to shop. it on, shake it on, spray it on. Denim makes Christmas go with a bang. Denim for the man who doesn't have to try too hard. Come on, time to open the presents. I know which one I'm going to open first. <laughs> I'd never have guessed. Let's get the others. Harvey's Bristol Cream. The best sherry in the world. Christmas! That's what it's all about. Price! That's what it's all about. Value is what it's all about. And international. Cheers! That's what it's all about. Beers! That's what it's all about. This Ferrari has four whistlings which make it go very fast. This new paper mate Eclipse has a unique pump action which ensures an even flow of ink to the point even upside down. The Eclipse is guaranteed for life, yet actually costs less than the Ferrari. And when it comes to writing your thank you letters, it leaves the Ferrari standing. The new Eclipse. Is it any wonder that there'll be more paper mates than Ferraris in our stockings this Christmas? Let the warmth come through. Your Christmas and New Year TV Times magazine has 164 pages packed with details of 14 days programs on ITV. On sale now.
Do you want a good old knees up? Then get stuck in the Chaz and Dave's Christmas Jamboree bag with 40 all-time favourites. It's on Warwick, of course. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas and a half. Aladdin and his wonderful lamp, Britain's greatest pantomime, Theatre Royal Norwich. Oh, Laymore. Coty Laymore, for the special sounds of Christmas. Westbrook Glass would like to say many thanks to all their customers and wish you all a very Merry Christmas. How's the Christmas shopping going then, Oscar? Down at Norman. What? All of it? Yeah, the lot. Friends, relatives, loved ones, and the wives. Cool. Hell, I even got one for you, Norman. You didn't. I did. You didn't. I did. Did you? What, from that really fancy, expensive department store? No. Went down the off license, old son. Oh. You bought everyone that McEwen's export, didn't you? Very true, Norman. Yeah. After all, is it not the perfect accompaniment to Yuletide jollity and celebration? Yeah. And it's not bad for parties, either. Norman. Free turkey or boots voucher from any branch of March the Tailors when you spend £45 or more in our men's or ladies' fashion departments. Also, ask about our speedy personal loan service. Up to £60 available now for your Christmas shopping. Remember, March the Tailors dress you well. The classic collection is an ideal gift for everyone. Each box contains three records or cassettes with at least 50 titles in each set. The classic collection... Capture Christmas with the Helena Compact Camera, Elena May Price, $59.95. Or the Canon Sure Shot Supreme, Elena May Price, $144.95. Elena May. Limits Theatre Royal brings you Cinderella, starring Paul Henry. Nari Dawn Ford to Susan Morn. Featuring the London Palladium sets and the costumes by the Emmanuel. And you shall see Cinderella. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, you will if you book now. Love you, Cinders. Dixon's unbeatable Christmas deals. This superb quality Seisho portable stereo, incredible value at under £30. Save £100 on the Minolta 7000 camera outfit with autofocus zoom lens. Save £30 on this Yamaha stereo keyboard with synthesizer plus free headphones. Save £44 on this Canon Type Star electronic typewriter. Dixon's deals, we guarantee you can't buy better. Do you know where Santa shops? <laughs> I shop for cigars, chocolates, annuals, decorations, Christmas cards, and much, much more. Everything to fill my sack this Christmas at newsagents displaying this sign. And there's one near you. St. Bridget's have everything for a beautiful Christmas. Lovely pot plants, nursery fresh flowers, Christmas trees, holly and mistletoe. All from the garden centres of St. Bridget Nurseries, Exeter. Iceberg is an alcohol-free German wine, light, fresh, and slightly sparkling for anyone who needs to travel safely this Christmas. Mmm, the West Country's best-selling top-tasting ice cream Christmas puddings made by the ice gastronomes of Salcombe Dairy are now on sale in the best stores of Devon, Cornwall, Dorset, Somerset, and Avon. 
However, demands are heavy, so buy now. Stock your freezer today. Don't be left out in the cold without your Sulcum Dairy Christmas Super Puds. I'm Bernard Matthews, and I believe this is the juiciest, tenderest turkey you can give your family this Christmas. Golden Norfolk from Matthews Norfolk Farms. Beautiful. Make Co-op Westwood your first choice for Christmas with everything you need for the festive season and all at low, low prices. Like freshly frozen Co-op Christmas turkeys, only 52 pence a pound. Quality Street, £5 tin, just £8.95. Or Co-op Mixer Drinks, only 26 pence each. So for everything you need for the festive season, come to Co-op Westwood, your first choice for Christmas. To celebrate the season of goodwill, Mr. Kipling sent two of his rivals some samples of his new Christmas collection, including his deep-filled mince pie. One for me, one for you, one for me. Um, crisp golden pastry. One for me. Succulent spiced one mince you, meat. One for me. <laughs> Lost your appetite? Mr. Kipling does make an exceedingly tempting Christmas collection. The Liverpool Empire proudly presents Dig Whittington. Starring Little and Large. Hey, that's us. And Roland Rat. Oh, that's me. And it's on until January the 31st. So book now. Yeah. If you've ever wondered why Yardley is one of Christmas's best-loved traditions, you've only to look closer. Distinctive and masculine, classic gold aftershave and gift packs. Pure silk perfume, luxurious sprays and elegant gifts. Or new lavender with rosemary and thyme world-famous soaps and talcs. There's something for everyone with Yardley for Christmas. Presenting Disney's one and only Pinocchio and a classic collection of timeless videos. The best gifts you'll ever give. And that's the truth. If you want a wider choice of viewing this Christmas... Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to... Argus takes way. care of it. One look and you'll see how low prices can be. Whenever you shop at Morrison's. Like cucumber red salmon, only two seventy nine. Delicious. Asti spumanti martini, three ninety nine. Super. And Morrison's assorted crisps, only eighty nine pence for twelve. Crispy. So come down and see our best quality. find this many Christmas puddings at Tesco. Imagine what else you can buy there. W.H. Smith have got Christmas presents for people who love everything from trying out new recipes to keeping in touch with new friends. There's more to discover at W.H. Smith. Enjoy Christmas and New Year with the TV Times Double Issue. A feast of star-studded films, comedy, drama, variety on ITV and Channel 4. is going to be extra special with Foster and Allen's Christmas collection from Stylus. Make sure of your copy. It's at your record shop now. is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Okay, then. <clears throat> that was an awful lot longer than I remembered. <laughs> 
obviously I'd, I think I put that together last year and obviously it's some sort of long bumper one and totally forgotten. Anyway, the important thing is it's now time for this. Oh, hell yes. We can't end without some assassins. Hello, Danderscraft. How are you doing? Um, Foster. Oh, yeah. Foster and Alan made it to the mainland UK. Hence the almighty... Um, God, whatever Vic and Bob's version were called. Mulligan and O'Hare. That's it. Yeah. No, no orc attack tonight, I'm afraid. Instead, we have this music. Sanxi and Loader. Right. Today's game's Overlander. Oh, shit. So Overlander is a moon patrol thing. Cubic is some horribly wrong-headed attempt at a Rubik's Cube, and Pipeliner is just Pipe Mania. Yet again. Uh, right. Let's see what this is about. Good night, ballet dude. Take care. Pipeliner, the freeware game. Music by Manfred Schoening. Graphics and programming, Michael Weber. Bloody hell, Mooglemania. That's the gift that keeps giving. I'm glad you're all right. Crikey. Select level, easy heart of... Fuck it, let's try easy since we haven't played it before. Press fire. Oh my god, this is a really good version, I think. I... I what? What? Oh, here... Oh. oh, right, so you push... You hold down fire and move to the right to use the one from the right. Hold down fire and move to the left move that one. And you can also kind of skip them by holding up and down, which I have unfortunately now done and possibly screwed myself. Um... I've, I've run out of skips. <laughs> I spoilt it learning the controls and we were so close. Never mind. We can do it. We can do it. We probably can't do it, but we're going to bloody try. Mm. Where are we making it go to? Is it something where you just have to um, last for a certain amount of time? Oh shit. Oh my god! You don't get to keep going. Minimum 11. Okay, so we need to put in 11 pieces. Is that the, the uh, concept here? And why I put that there? That's not actually going to help us at all. Oh, here we are. We've got something going on. Cheers, Mishandon. Take care. Did I get to level two? I did. I didn't even realise Amiga Square. Bloody hell. Yeah, see, this is it, Arcturus Lux. It was really super good until we just got to kind of this bit. And now it's a bit... Yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted that one. Shit. Oh no. Oh, we did it. Oh, this is all right, but. Uh... Mm. Uh... It's just. 
it really needed to have the smooth flowing water and the sort of panic where you try and go, oh no, can I fix it in time and all that kind of stuff. Say so it lacks challenge, says Gamora, but yeah, to be fair, I did play it on easy, but yeah, let's see what happens when you fail miserably. Minimum 12, not today, because that piece is wrong. Oh, what the fuck? I'm just putting things at random and somehow it worked for that amount of time. Right, come on then. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Not as satisfying. That's exactly it, Black Shield Legion. Suddenly all freeze and game finishes. Game over. You have failed. Failed. I imagine the harder difficulty is just shorter time, isn't it? Let's find out. Goon will do. Oh no, it's got crazy shit going on. So you've got bonus pipes and blockages. Interesting. Bean jamming too. 46 months. Thank you very much. Yes, it's kind of... How to describe it? Bitmap Brothers Pipe Mania? Mm. Uh. I just want to see what happens when you get through the bonus thing, really. Right. So, blip, 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 blip. Bonus. Tell us about the bonus. We should use all our skips like an idiot. Okay, then. Great. Um, that's all right, isn't it? We've played a lot worse. Put it that way, we've played a lot worse. I might reset this so and get the music. Pipeliner. Oh no, music, thank you. Right, let's judge this. Pipeliner. I mean, it's all right. It's a mid to high three, I suppose. Let's, let's see where it goes. Yep, going in above asteroids or below power attack. All right. We're on 197, I believe. Pipeliner. Three. No hats, tragically. Um. Pipe Mania clone. That was very different. Very well done, Pipe Mania. Clone marred by crappy end of level non flow. <laughs> Moogle Mania's Haiku Review. Water in and out. A race against damp and time. Use the stop cock, please. Right. Cubic. Oh, fucking hell. Have we seen this before? It was a mess then as well. Oh, there's no menu. How do we... Oh, here we are. God, it's not even drawn the cube properly. Oh, my God, you, you can only... Oh, yeah. Um, oh, holy shit. You're right. The last one we saw was the solution to find a crate, and I think you're absolutely right. Oh, this is mo. How could you actively play this?
I mean, I want to rotate this. Uh, does that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is melting my eyes. This part melting my brain. Oh my god. Oh, bloody hell, and no options whatsoever. I'm trying to work out how this works. So there's two in that bit. Oh, that's not the right one, is it? Oh, fuck's sake. How do you rotate just, I want to rotate that one, how? You can you can't rotate the center. Oh, I suppose you just do the two outside bits when you bloody hell. Oh. Hang on. Is that like a mirror? What what's going? Oh my god. Oh, it just doesn't make sense to me spatially. As So this is like the other side of it, but how can you... Bloody hell. You need like air, air fucking... Air superiority fighter training in order to <laughs> understand this. My God. <laughs> Rubik's pube. More like says El Eco Man. Yes. Um, oh, my God. Gordy Glasgow says these things are ubiquitous on the Assassin's Discs. Oh! This is, I hate this. I hate it and I want it to die. And I will kill it if ever I have the opportunity. Um, I'm not even sure this makes it into the twos. Holy shit. <laughs> Just um, the second highest one star is Cube. Another Rubik's Cube solver, but with insane controls and terrible solving algorithm. Oh my god, I think it's probably better than that. Oh god, Kazajags, the abominably wrong-headed mouse lemmings cheese get thing designed by a maniac. That was a nightmare. Oh god. Oh god, yeah, this doesn't this doesn't reach into the twos. This is a one. I've now I've got to work out if it's worse than uh, Kazajagged or not. Uh Is it worse than the Rubik's Cube Solver? I think it probably isn't. Because the problem with the Rubik's Cube Solver is A, that you couldn't work out how to put data into it, similar to this, but B, the algorithm was terrible anyway. So, okay. It gets a one, but a high one. To be fair, we haven't had many ones. So, and then seven. I forgot what the cubic, that was it. Cubic. One. No hats. infinitely confusing attempt at a Rubik's Cube simulator isn't even a properly drawn cube. Mooglemania's haiku review. This hurts my damn eyes. Is that towards or away? Am I even real? How do you move the middle row? You don't. You have to move the other ones around them. Don't master. No middle movement. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I don't want to move that bit. It's kind of irrelevant. Um, yep, yeah, nope. No right mouse button menus, retarded egg. That's all. Oh my god, no, there is! It's hidden, though. You have to go over cubic whilst holding down the right-hand mouse button. Not usually how they work on Amiga. All you've got is new game and about. Where you can find the person guilty for this. Great. Overlander. This is going to be the hot one. This is going to be the quality game. Come on, come on. Ooh. Do we want Chorpigo Neneva... 
the Euclidean staircase or overlord. Oh, the Euclidean, Euclidean staircase. <laughs> Can't pronounce it, but I want to hear it. Welcome to Overland. This game is shareware. If you like this game and decide to keep it, then please send me some form of payment. Such as a sock. Then Dobby will be free of master. If you have any comments or suggestions for new games, then do not hesitate in writing to me. I really appreciate the feedback I receive. I'm also currently looking out for a graphic artist for future collaboration in both public domain and commercial products. Please send a demo of your talents and the below address if you think you've got what it takes. It's Mark Sheiky! Oh, it's Mark! Fuck, man. Right. That's a good sign. Yes, Scorpia Software. Here we go. I retweeted Mark today, who had um, he's put all his old Amiga games up for free on his site. Overlander. Right. Oh, this is more like it. Overlander's based on the classic coming up Moon Buggy or something like that. Moon Patrol, Mark! This version is closest to a Dragon 32 game entitled Lunar Rover Patrol. There's not another game like it on the Amiga. To shoot the small obstacles, your shot must be moving fairly slowly, so fire early. The front of your buggy is more sensitive than the rear, so jump craters early too. Ooh, interesting. All the obstacles are possible, some are difficult, some are very difficult. Classic music, but he's a quality musician. Yeah, I'm going to say he's looking for a graphics guy, but he's not done a bad job with this, is he? Bloody hell. But nothing happening. Whoa, fucking hell, we're back in it though. Whoa, I see what they mean about shooting early to hit those. Oh no! Bad jump. Oh, nice explosion. The tree bore soft roots button to Atari, the Atari XEGS, the Zegs. Oh, no, whoop. Because it's on Mars, Arcturus Deluxe. Time to reach point E, your time. Top record. You broke a record. Ooh. Oh, what a bastard bombing. Oh, God. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yes. Some of the bombs need craters later in the original game, don't they? Oh shit, that was an obstacle! It looked like the explosion, it threw me off. Oh piss sake, I just literally just didn't see it there, which is ridiculous. Game over. Good night, bird's eye. Take care, mate. Right, we need to reset this because I want to hear at least one other tune. Because uh, Mark's music is tip top. There was a really good conversion of Moon Control, Moon Patrol, sorry, for the Spectrum, which was never released, if I remember. It's completed. You can play it now, it's been sort of leaked, but at the time it was never released. And it was really good. Let's try Chopper Golden and Eva. Bless you, Shiki. Bleaky. <laughs> this is this is the kind of game where you keep the disc just for this one, don't you? Even though the other two are shocking. Well, that's not true. The pipe, the pipe one isn't shocking, is it? It's just not very good. A missed opportunity, the pipe one. Fuck you! 
this. Oh no! Oh shit, son. Uh -huh. Cheers, Meldy. Take care. Has dropped. Oh, damnation alley! Just Davidson. Got that Blu ray, I've still got not round, still not got around to watching it. There was a weird model of the Landmaster from it in uh, a movie shop in Norwich for years. Oh shit! I can't bloody see that one. That must have been impossible on a CRT. Ooh. Oh shit. Alien bastards. Oh fuck! Blowing holes in the uh, landscape there. Oh piss. Can we just take a moment to uh, realise how playable and impressive this is after the Rubik's Cubes? <laughs> Whoa! Hee hee! Chow ding ding! Oh, piss. Good night, Ellie, all over. Right. We've got to quickly run this one again, just because uh, there's a third piece of music. Overlord. I think this is going to be a bit more dramatic because it's called Overlord. It does get difficult quick, Arnie. But hey, there's a challenge. Right. Go. Oh, this is the stuff. Orchestra hit or something. Oh, you bastard. Ah, was that a Martian joke, Dean R. Uh, Marsh? Unfortunately, I missed it. <laughs> we appreciate the effort. I wasn't going to play this again. It's just really good fun. So yeah, oh, oh, bloody hell. Oh, shot early enough to hit the low stuff. Glad I read that tip at the start. Oh, oh shit, I was too busy concentrating on the ones in the air and just ran straight into a hole. 
Oh, I like that the checkpoints aren't far behind. Oh, piss! Misjumped. This is quite right channel heavy, Eternal, that is true. Oh! That's a bastard, that one, isn't it? Oh. Sweet. Right. Leave that bit of music up because it's lovely. I think that's going to be high three. May leak into the fours. So let's have a look. Oh, it does leak into the floors. But only just. Goes in above Amos Reversi, but below Dynamite Warriors. Thank you, Mr. Shiki. You have come along like a balm and soothed our Omega Pain this evening. But no hat, so shame. There's quite a few fours, but they're real fucking quality. Haiku review for Moodle Mania. A Swish Moon Patrol. Looks good, sounds good, and plays well. Nothing more to add, yeah. I may have undersold this. I've just realized I put it in below Dynamite Warriors, but reading the description, it's that basic early version of Dynamite Warriors. It didn't get properly good till later. Mind you, it was still pretty good, the early one, wasn't it? Hang on, let's look up a bit. Oh shit, yeah, this has got to go up a bit. This has totally got to go up a bit. Going in above Checkers Conquest and below Space Rescue. Ooh, I'm glad I bloody spotted that. We can't have anything not perfect in this spreadsheet. <laughs> Sweet. Ah, oh, well that was nice. But now, friends, the time has come to finish the stream. Where we'll be... Uh, raiding into Beardy Viking, I believe, who is doing a charity stream this evening. Yes, he is. Good. Just, just sorting that out. But before we do, folks, let's have a lovely Christmas tune. Because we probably won't be streaming on Sunday, because it's literally Christmas Day. Well, I will be streaming, but it'll be a passive one. Uh, thank you, Gordy Glasgow. That's the worst pun since Dave last spoke. Right, we're just going to put one more disc 198. Next time's disc includes Scottish Football Manager, Viper, and Push. Ooh. Doing a passage from Boxing Day. Ooh, I don't know, Girl the Drunk. I hadn't thought of Boxing Day. Probably not. Probably just Christmas Day this year. Unless I have time to edit something else together, but that seems unlikely this year. Mind you, if I've got enough left over from Christmas Day, I could just use that, couldn't I? Hmm, I'll think about it. Anyway, it's Christmas, everyone. And what could be more Christmassy than a Christmas-themed Top of the Pop set with a lovely Christmas tree for our very favourite singer ever. I wish I could fly when up to the sky, but I can't. You can? I can't. I wish I could see Folks see in me, but I can't. You can. I can't. Look, Orville. Yes? Now that I'm here with you, there's
there's nothing that you can't do. So why don't you make a start? I will. Hear what I'm saying, Orville? Yes. Who is your very best friend? You are. I'm gonna help you mend your broken heart. Thank you. Now is that I've had a mummy and dad that I don't. You don't? I don't. I often pretend my sadness will mend, but it won't. It will. Stop complaining. I'm taking the edge off it. Nothing that you can say Will change how I feel today You know that we're never apart Will you want? Hear what I'm saying, Orville? Yes? Who is your very best friend? You are I'm gonna help you mend <laughs> Your broken heart oh, So does this thing Change how I feel today. You know that we're never part. We won't. Hear what I'm saying, Orville? Yes. Who is your very best friend? You are. I'm gonna help you mend <laughs> your broken heart. No, but you know I'm going to help you mend it. You, you will, won't you? Of course I will. Because you love me, don't you? Well, we all love you. We all love you, don't we? Thank you. There you are. <laughs> how, how much do you love me? How much? Yes. Oh, oh, this much. As much as that? As much as that. My broken heart. Christ, that is the actual worst, isn't it? Oh. And so in case you're wondering, I was finishing off the Sour Patch Kids bag. Um, dearie me. Dark Squall, thank you very much for the bits Merry there. Merry Christmas, all. Happy holidays, and be safe, well, and hopefully warm. And don't dream of thunder, 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 thunder. <laughs> that was a bit odd, wasn't it? I, I really like that... Um... Indian accent and text to speech because it's the most accurate sort of or most natural sounding, but I'm not entirely sure about the thunder bit there. Um, Atreyu, oh bless you, Atreyu. Merry Christmas to you too, my friend. Ryu Kazuki says when Keith Harris died, his will specified that Orville was to be locked up in the Order of Water Rats Museum and never performed again. Oh. Well, to be fair. Shouldn't really be performed against. It was his thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. Well, at least it wasn't Grandma with that bloody choir. Oh, is that a Christmas song, Crucible? <laughs> no, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> yeah, Irk. Um, I retweeted Mark today because he, uh, by coincidence, today he had uh, uh, put that out on Twitter that it, all his stuff was free there, which is groovy. Right. It is now time to raid into Mr. Beardy Viking of our very own flock. Um, that grandma song stopped Lennon from number one, says DC Blake. Yeah. Um, make sure it is actually running properly before we... Uh... Where? Oh, yep, here we go. Night Shift for Samaritan stream. And it's the currently the Fast Show Christmas special. You can't argue with that. Right. I shall drop you over in merely one of your Earth minutes. Until then, friends, take care. And I shall see thee 
Uh, well, it'll be next week now, I imagine. But as I say, there will be passive stuff over Christmas if you should need such things. If not, you can just put it on in the background and immediately regret not putting on something better. Mm. Right, take care. And I shall hand you over, as I say, in... No, it isn't 60 seconds. It's only 10 seconds. Much, much quicker. Right. Cheers, folks. Merry Christmas. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.